Greetings, citizens. This is how I survived 400 days in Minecraft Hardcore. There's so much we still have left to do in this world, and in this video I need to keep chipping away at our to-do list. I have the following three goals in mind. Number one, upgrade my nether portal. Number two, build a bee habitat for all of our bee friends. And number three, try out some tips and tricks that I've been seeing from all of you in the comments. If you go on to enjoy the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We'll be releasing more videos of this world soon, as well as a brand spankin' new series, and you don't want to miss it. I won't keep you any longer, citizen. Let's get started. I'm just blowing through these emeralds. It's like whenever I get paid in real life. Every paycheck, it's the same thing. It all goes to Pop-Tarts and Dogecoin. Alright, we can do this. Oh man, I don't know if I can do this. Ooh, no, 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 no. Oh no. This is bad. I'm having a bad day and I'm gonna take it out on you. Ever since I hit senatorial rank, I refuse to eat anything that isn't gold. Hello? I think I got one. Oh no! That was a terrible mistake. We are back for the next 100 days. I can hardly believe that we're already at day 301. The first 300 days kind of flew by and now we're back to accomplish 400. I think it makes sense to uh, jump up here real quick and show you some of the things we've already got set up. If you look out here, we've got a very good looking base, if I do say so myself. But like most Minecraft worlds, it is never finished, simply abandoned. So there are a few things that I do want to work on, but I don't want to kick off right away with some of the bigger build ideas that I have because mainly there is some low hanging fruit that I'd like to take care of first. And some of that is actually based on the comments that have been coming in. I've been getting some good tips and ideas about things I can build here. The trouble is I can't seem to find what I'm looking for. I even went through the trouble of organizing all these and I still don't know where it is. There we go. Dripstone and pointed dripstone. Now apparently this stuff can be used to get infinite uh, lava. And for that, I will also need a cauldron, so we'll make one of those. And if you did watch the last video, one of the things I was asking about was when I found this dripstone block and pointed dripstone is what can I do with it? What can I use it for? I wasn't aware of anything that it could be used for. And I got a few comments telling me, hey, you can actually use it to get infinite lava. So I thought, why not? Let's give it a try. And it might be kind of cool if we build this into the wall so we can see it happening real time. Uh, how are we going to do this? That might not work, actually. Yep, not a good spot. I need it three wide. You know what? We may as well just get fancy with this. And by the way, I didn't look up how to do this. I kind of just read a couple comments and made assumptions, really. So I will not be surprised if this doesn't end up working. I'm actually going to borrow from our incinerator. And then I'm going to need to be quick with this. One, two, three, and get some glass. All right, we did it. Okay, so I mean, I'm seeing some drips. And that tells me it's probably working. Very cool. Plus, I like that actually as a design. It's kind of a neat thing to just have sitting in your living room. No idea how long it's going to take. Once it fills up, we'll put the incinerator back. But once again, thank you for all the comments. I asked about what this could be used for. All of you told me, and now it exists in our world. So I do appreciate that. Why do I hear burning? Oh, no. Not good. Not good. Ah! Wood and lava don't mix. I'm burning my house down. No, 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 no. Oh, this is really bad. Okay, and we started day one by burning the entire base down. This could not have gone worse. That is, to date, the dumbest thing that I have ever done in this world. How did it get out of there? That's like entirely enclosed. How did something catch on fire? I am so confused how something caught fire from that. All right, we are off to a fantastic start. Obviously, I just wanted more of an open concept base. I, I didn't actually want that wall there, and that's the reason I did that. It was all a part of the plan. Want to at least cover this area back up and see if it catches again, because I, again, I don't, I don't know how I got through there. I covered it up a bit more. I put some more blocks on top of it, just in case it somehow gets through one block. I was joking about the open concept thing, but now that I'm looking at this, it might not be a bad idea to open this up and be able to see the uh, axolotl enclosure from the outside. It's all part of the plan. Okay, we'll keep an eye on it. Hopefully it's not going to happen again, and it was just a fluke. Okay, so with that crisis averted, there's one more thing that I did want to add that shouldn't take too long uh, to the base. And actually, this one does involve lava as well, so I think to be safe, why don't we go back to this room near the back of my base where, you know, we kind of found a little cavern and closed it off. I think I'll build it back here. And 
I just saw a skelly boy over here. Hey, friend. Goodbye. We're gonna want to open this up a little bit more as well. Okay, I think that'll be enough space. The trouble is I've never built one of these before, so at least not in this configuration. So I'm gonna take some figuring out. See if you can figure out what we're building before I finish. It's always a fun thing to do. Uh, no, that's not right. I think I need to take this out. And I need hoppers. Then I believe with the stairs I can put water there. Oh, I was going to say it wouldn't spill over. I think I'm wrong. So we do need... I think this was all supposed to be one level lower. Now that I'm looking at it. Eh, it'll still work, actually. I know what we need. We need a water shield. There we go. That's better. Okay, we got that water part all set up. Still no lava in here, so I think we are going to have to run down real quick to the, uh, to the mine to grab some for backup. Please don't burn down while I'm gone. Now, where is my lava? There you are. So you've probably guessed by now what this is, but the last step should be placing lava up here, and then I think it might make its way down here, so I'll put a block here really quickly after we place it. And then it should... Yep, it's going along, touching all of the water, and turning it into stone. So now we've got a nice little stone generator. We should be able to break these. They'll go into the hoppers, go directly into the large chests so that we can get as much stone as we want without having to go to particular points in the mine and clear out areas like this. It's just a little bit easier. If you do want to AFK, you can. And the reason I thought it might be a good addition is because I potentially will be doing some larger builds in this video and I'm gonna need a lot of building blocks. So this will be a good source for that. Now the moment of truth though, let's see if it actually works. So I should just be able to hold the mouse down, keep this going, and bingo, there we go. If we look in the chests, we've started collecting some stone. And obviously this could be stone or cobblestone depending on which pickaxe I use, but I think for the most part we are going to want stone. I think what I'm going to do is spend the rest of the day actually AFKing with the stone farm or the stone generator just so we get a baseline in here for anything we want to do for the rest of the video. I did just put some stone in this first one so that'll be a little bit skewed but if we look into the back ones that'll tell us what we're getting in you know about a day half day of uh, AFKing here. So I will check back in with you once we finished up here. All right I think it's nearly night time so I think we wrap up and let's take a look at what we got nearly three stacks per chest except for the last that one's a little bit harder to hit but that's really not that bad i think it's going to be pretty easy to get enough blocks for what we have planned for this video yep legion v is a happy boy i like it you'll also notice that i put up some extra glass here it did fill up so this works that is super cool but now i'm worried that that lava is gonna start this wood floor on fire so for now i'm just gonna cover it up if i need to grab lava all i have to do is break this block grab it and put it back so i think we'll be good with that all right garfield now that we have taken care of some of the low-hanging fruit that i had in mind early in this video and we turned our house into a piece of modern art I can tell you a little bit about the first project we'll be working on. What is that guy doing over my shoulder? They keep thinking they can get up two blocks and I don't know why. It's not gonna work, man. Anyway, one of the goals is to make a bee habitat. And you'll notice I have this beautiful area in the middle of the base that has a lot of flowers and trees and a nice big open area with room for more flowers, I might add. There's plenty we can add there. The obvious thing that you might notice is that it's completely open. If we were to use this for bees, they would be able to very easily just fly out, leave home, and never come back to us. So I have a couple thoughts on that. Something that I want to do to enclose this entire thing, and the most obvious way to do that would be with glass. One other consideration though, it's also the place we have our water elevators. I don't know if bees can be a little bit mischievous, a little bit quirky and go down into this and head into the mine. Obviously we don't want that. So maybe some testing we have to do with that. Maybe we cover these up, I'm not exactly sure. But the other consideration is as we cover this with glass, we're obviously gonna have to also close the entrances up. How grand do I want that to be? And on top of that, how grand do I want these walls around the side to be? I could just start right here with glass and build my way up. Or I could do something kind of cool with that instead. So what I think I'm going to do is start with what I want to do on these walls and bit of a preview into my, the way my mind's working here. I think we go out one block 
and build another circle around this so that it's leaving a one block trail essentially through the middle of two walls. I can then build that up with glass on either side and just put some different things in it. Maybe there's kelp in it, maybe there's some uh, magma blocks or soul sand, things like that to show bubbles in it. Maybe I put some fish in it, but that might be a neat way to start it off is just a few blocks up filled with water that might be a nice design to start off essentially a glass dome that's going to cover this entire thing so that we can use this area as a bee habitat without them escaping with all of that in mind we are going to need a lot of materials for this so it's time to grab the shulker boxes and prepare a little bit we're also going to need to do so many trades with the plebs because i have 21 glass I don't know what I'm going to need, but it is probably going to be over a thousand if I had to guess. Should probably grab some of the flowers while we're here as well. And then because we did just make a essentially a stone generator, we'll have plenty of stone brick. So let's start by just seeing if we can get this second circle right. And then we can see what we want to do about the, the water wall or whatever we we're going to call that. Off we go. So that's what I'm thinking, kind of hard to see from here, but I essentially just followed the wall around with one block gap in the middle, and we just need to do that all the way around. All right, we already need glass. So we're about to make some librarians very happy. And by the way, when I was looking at her earlier, I said I only have 21. Just so you know, I'm aware I can use all of this sand and get glass with that but i kind of want to just keep the sand in case i need it for something else i'd rather have that because i do have the nerds over here that can just trade me the glass anyway and i don't have to worry about smelting it that way and we'll have to keep a rotation going here i'm gonna have to trade to get emeralds and then use those emeralds to get glass because i don't want to run out by essentially just buying thousands of blocks of uh glass all right who's gonna sell me their entire inventory Thank you, and thank you. We'll just go all the way down the line, see how much one uh, trip down this line gets us. Luckily, it's only one emerald for four glass, so that's not bad at all. Okay, so we just finished going down the line. Looks like a little over six stacks of glass. That's really not too bad, because really any time that we run out as we're working, we could just come back and do that again. I, I don't think it's going to be much of an issue. Actually, just in case, every time we do that, we should also come over here and buy glowstone. I don't want to run out of that either. Thank you. Oh, did you just, oh, you refilled just for me immediately. I appreciate that. You know what? We should probably fill this with water before we start building up with glass. I think that'll save us some time in the future, so let's do that. Now we just have to keep running back to that little water source about a hundred times and place it one after the other. Yeah, right. There's no way I'm doing that. Luckily, we can use an infinite source instead. Oh yeah, that's not bad at all. With the shaders, it does make it a little bit difficult to tell what is a source block and what is not. You'd also think because it started raining, that would just fill it all up for us, but no. Okay, that's one filled. A side benefit I just thought of, these goobers are no longer going to be able to get in here, get stuck, and then try to walk up three blocks. I think I said it in another video, but there's really not much room for a, for a brain in that noggin, is there? Yep, no comeback, didn't think so. I keep hearing a spider and I'm afraid it's just gonna like fall out of the sky on me. Where is that coming from? No doubt there's an underground cave of some kind that we just missed. Okay, all of the channels are filled, so we should be good to go on the next step. And by next step, I just mean placing a ton of glass. I think we just do these three blocks high and then do some of the decoration that I have in mind and see how it looks. I, I don't want this part to be super high because I want to have the ability to make a dome that doesn't clear these trees by a ton because I don't want bees to just be kind of flying up at the top and getting stuck. I'd rather have them uh, collect down where all of the, the vegetation and flowers is. I am wondering how much the stacks of glass that we got are going to do, if we'll be able to make it all the way around or not. Oh man, that was... Uh one of the four and I just blew through a ton of that glass. Well, at least we'll get to spend a lot of time with our best friends. That looks a bit chaotic when it's done as a circle because of how many angles there are. It's not just a straight line of glass. We'll have to see how it looks when I've got the, the kelp and the bubbles and everything going through. Oh boy, that was all the glass and we didn't even finish two, so that will take quite a bit. Yep, you boys are gonna be seeing a lot of me. And back down the line to do it again. Something to be said about the merchant classes of Rome. You do have your uses. So we'll keep you around for now. Realizing I probably 
could have used a ton less glass by just placing it on the blocks that are touching the water, not these outer blocks. And depending on how it looks when I'm done, actually, let's try that. Let's see how it looks. Okay, so what looks better? That's one of the ones I did with all of the blocks. I think I need to do it both sides to tell. And that is it with only some of the blocks. Honestly, I don't know that it looks that much different, but I like the idea of not using as much. And also, I kind of like how you can see some of these, and it also leaves me spots for torches. Ugh. I might have to go back and remove some of those. Yep, I agree with you. This is probably a big waste of time, but it is saving me glass blocks in the end. And because I liked how it looked about 1% better, that's the reason we're using this time. It's also very misleading how you can hear all this glass just shattering into a billion pieces, and yet every one of these is dropping a nice pristine glass block. Okay, there we go. All done. That probably saved us one trip back to the nerds as well. I mean, obviously we're going to have to go back when we start in the dome, but at least we can finish this part. All right, let's have a look. So that is the start. We're going to have to build the entryways to block off the sides of these, but we may... Yeah, we may put some temporary blocks there just so I could fill all of this with water and start putting some of the magma blocks and soul soil and kelp and that sort of thing inside all of these before we close it up. So let's start doing a little bit of that. First, just so we don't have to put water in all the middle blocks, we'll only have to go through and do the top ones. Let's just plant kelp all throughout. And same trick as we used for the water elevators, that'll just turn any water that is flowing into a source block so we don't actually have to go through with a bucket and do it manually for every single spot inside here. Of course, I didn't bring enough kelp. Give me that. And there we go, beautiful. So now, for instance, if we put water right there the kelp should grow through it and turn the two blocks beneath it into source blocks what i don't know however is if i can do the same trick we did at the bottom up here so can i now take this no i cannot that is a problem Ooh, this is going to be a pain there's probably an easier way to do this but i'm just running back and forth because it's not like it's that much that i have to fill I'm not putting it on every block though, so I'm curious if the kelp will grow all the way up and turn some of these top ones as well into source blocks. But we will find out. You know, when I was planning this in my head, it went a lot faster. Didn't really think this part through, to be honest. So while we're working on these walls, might be a good time to stop and tell you I've never tried making a dome before in Minecraft. Glass dome, anything dome, so this will be a first. I'm both excited and terrified by the prospect. No, I think it'll turn out really well. I think it'll be pretty cool. So I guess we just leave this one and move on to the next. See how it turns out. Kelp, kelp, kelp. Kelp, kelp, kelp. I just had a thought. It's going to be incredibly embarrassing if this just doesn't work. I'm spending a lot of time on this, and if it either doesn't work like the design I'm thinking of, or if it just looks terrible and we have to tear it down, I'm, I'm not going to be super happy, but, you know... Lessons learned. Did I already say there's probably an easier way to do this? I feel like this is probably not the most efficient way. Feel free to call me out. If you want to leave me a comment and say, actually, you could have done it this way, that would have taken a lot less time. I'd be happy to know because next time I have a build like this, I will use it. I guess comparatively, running back and forth to grab water and fill this thing up isn't that great a feat, especially if you consider what went into actually building the Colosseum or the Pantheon or that type of thing, those great structures. And yes, by the way, eventually I do want to build some kind of Colosseum in my world. Aside from the SPQR, there's really not a whole lot that identifies this as a Roman colony, so I think that would be a good one. Maybe that's a 500 days goal, is build a Colosseum. Hmm. You know what I'm noticing? I don't think the kelp is growing in the areas where we did not place a source block. Or maybe it's my imagination. Kind of hard to tell. I, we'll give it more time. I have a ton of buckets. I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. May as well make an infinite source. That way we can just jump back and forth. I think for this one, we're going to do it every block. I'm worried that skipping around is actually not giving us the results we want. This is the last one. We're nearly there. All right, I think this is it. There we go. So they're all filled. A couple of them still need kelp. So that's the last step. 
So what I'm doing now is going through and checking for any that have fully grown just so I can grab them and bring them to one of the other walls to make sure they have uh, all the kelp that they'll need. Actually, I don't know why I didn't think of this, but now that I've been collecting all this, I could just go and add the kelp. I don't have to wait for it to grow. I can just plant what I need to make all of these source blocks. Ah, okay. See, I can't put one on top of this, which means I am going to have to place water there. Then I can. Yep. Okay. So we're going to have to go through and fix a little bit of it, but I think we're nearly done. Okay. At least that's one entirely done. This is really taking a long time. This is taking much longer than I thought it was going to. And I need to remember that we finished this one. So why don't we just take away the staircase leading up to it? Okay, good. I think we at least filled this one in all the way with water. So we should be good. Yeah. They all filled in so we can go clear this one out. Much easier. To tell you the truth, I'm not going to miss this part when we move on and go to the next step of this build. Pew, pew, pew. All right, I think that's it. We're done. Every block within these walls is a source water block. So we don't have to worry about soul sand not working or magma cubes not working or kelp not growing or anything like that. They're all the same. So we should be good. And speaking of, let's start to evenly distribute some of this stuff. So for example, if we put a magma block there, we should see some bubbles. That's what we want. We're basically just going to kind of scatter those throughout here, that and uh, soul sand. So we'll see them going in two directions, randomly place them, and then we will see how this looks. I probably should have done this first, but I do want to place some kelp around as well. So we're just going to have to take the hits every time we swim over one of these. Whoa, whoa. it's like a carnival ride. And I get motion sick, by the way, so it's not my favorite thing. Okay, there we go. So this is what I was going for. Now there's some movement inside the walls when the kelp grows. That'll give us a little bit of extra detail as well. I'm hoping once it's all lit up and looking nice. Ooh, lit up. I wonder if we should put some glowstone down there. You had to say it. You had to give me that idea. Now I need to go get some glowstone and get back in there. If I had known this is what I was getting myself into when I became a legionary, nah, I probably would have still done it. Honestly, you may not even notice when I put these in during the day, but probably worth it at nighttime. And in case you notice, yeah, there's not really any rhyme or reason to this. I'm just randomly going around and placing stuff. It was never part of the rules. Nobody ever said that it had to be even or had to make any sense. Yeah, I have no idea if those will be visible at all, but I'd rather put them there now and be happy about it later than wanting to come back and add them at a later date and having to take this whole thing apart. So why not? Pretty sure I'm randomizing. I'm just trying to keep it even as I'm placing these and as I go. I don't think it's going to look, you know, too orderly to the same. Ooh. Oh, oh, no. yeah, I need to breathe. I forgot about that. But anyway, yeah, that's what I'm trying to avoid. I don't want it to be like one, two, three, this block, one, two, three, that block. I'm just placing them as I go. I'm almost thinking now that I should have put the glowstone one block up, but I don't like the idea of it being uneven with everything else, so maybe not. Oh, I keep forgetting that I have to breathe. I would also put fish in here as I was doing this, or after I finished rather, but I'm like 93.6% sure that they would just end up dying. Oh, like me, because I keep forgetting that I have to breathe. But yeah, I think the magma cubes would probably pull them down and just flash fry them. So while I like the idea, I do not think it would work out. All right, I think I'm done. Next up, we're either going to be working on the entrances or covering this up and starting the dome. But either way, I think it's probably a good idea to go trade for a bit more glass because we're going to need it either way. You know what? I'm. This is going to sound strange. I was going to say I'm getting low on beetroot, but I trade this stuff like crazy. This is low to me, so maybe we should go stock up real quick. Note to future legion, create massive beetroot farm that's larger than a what is this, 9x9 nine nine square? I think we'd be doing ourselves a favor if we just made an enormous beetroot farm that allowed us to fill up a double chest and not have to worry about it. Do the same for our melons and pumpkins since we're here. So many melons. I'm just blowing through these emeralds. It's like whenever I get paid in real life. Every paycheck, it's the same thing. It all goes to Pop-Tarts and Dogecoin. So remember, Garfield, when we finish the bee habitat, you need to stay in the house. You are allergic, and I'm almost positive that EpiPens haven't been invented yet. 
Okay, a couple things we're going to use today to accomplish, and that is get rid of this icky cobblestone and replace it and cover up the top of these areas. I don't know if anything would actually get into that somehow. I don't see how it could, but I don't like the idea of it being open. I don't have one of those uh, pool scoopy things to get the leaves out, so I'm not going to I'm not going to worry about it. When I said pool scoopy things, I was waving my hand around in real life like you could see it, and I totally forgot that you can't see me. But no matter. All right, this water's going to get everywhere, but whatever. Clear out. There we go. Much nicer. Love it. I accidentally destroyed all of these flowers. I just realized these are dandelions, too. I think we probably could afford to replace those with something different now. I mean, not just yet, but eventually. I think if dandelions get taken out we would be okay with them not being replaced. Oh, hello. Oh yeah, that's interesting. You come all the way from the Silk Road, you say. That is that is so interesting. Well, lucky for you two, you're the first llamas to grace me with a visit this video. Unluckily for you, that means I kind of want them. Okay, that should get me one. I don't have time for this. I'm getting the lava bucket. For anybody that doesn't know, this is actually how Rome established its power. Whenever wandering traders would come into its uh, territories, the provincial governor or whoever happened to be in power at the time would accidentally drop some lava right near them and then just say, oh, it was an accident that definitely was not me. It wasn't my fault. They just expired from lava burns and I was able to appropriate all of their goods. So in case you didn't know about that, that's some, uh, some Roman history for you. I'm doing a very poor job of uh, whatever it is I'm trying to do here. You and you come over this way. Stay there for one minute. I'll be right back. Why didn't you stay? There we go. Okay, cleaned up. Now I know we have to tame you both. And this is interesting. It's You're kind of different colors. I thought it was just white and brown, but we appear to have a beige. Exotic. Don't be like that. Caesar and Brutus are gonna love you. Yeah, see, I knew it. Caesar and Brutus are gonna love you. No Name and No Name are gonna love you. You're gonna be a big happy family. Hey, look at me. This isn't really up for discussion. You are going to go into the pen with the rest of the llamas. Okay, see, it wasn't that much easier. All right, let's head on over. Hey, fellas, I got you a new friend. There you go. Look at that. Six llamas and three horses, beautiful. Okay, so that was a bit of a distraction, but I am focused. We are going to finish this now. And the last part of this is I just want to cover it up with quartz. There we go. Now we're not going to have any accidents. Kind of a way of legion proofing this, so in case I'm ever flying around, I'm not going to fall in here. And I can already tell I'm going to need much more of this. I really hope that we're not going to have to go to the nether to get more quartz, because that is not something that interests me at this time. It is pretty classy though. I don't think we've really had a chance to build with quartz yet too much. I think there, yeah, there's a little bit in the villager house, but it's not too, uh, too prominent throughout the base. That was an accident. I do think I want to keep this theme up though. When we get to building the dome over this, I wouldn't mind having maybe four or eight uh, I don't know what to call them, like intersections of quartz running up through the glass as we go up. Yeah, I'm not really sure how to describe it. I guess when I start building it, you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. Seeing as we have a minute while I'm building this, I did want to mention, I think I have an idea as something we can do in this world to commemorate the amount of subscribers that are joining the channel. I'll probably talk about it a bit more as we get closer to the end of the video, but it partially came from an idea I saw in one of the comments, and then I added on to it a little bit, something that we could just track as we're going to show channel growth and how many people are being added every day, which is just incredible to see. So that's something I'm hoping we have enough time for. If we don't get to it in this video, you'll definitely see it in the next one, but keep an eye out at the end of this video. All right, so with that done, I think it is time to work on the entryways for this because I want those to be done before I start building the dome, mainly because I want to be able to build it off of them rather than trying to fit it in after the fact. So let's take a look at these before we go any further. Also, look at that. Ooh, isn't that pretty? I'm happy that turned out. I would have been pretty sad if this didn't look nice, but I'm a big fan. Actually, before we do that, tradition dictates we have to go up here. Look at that. Doing that, it's just 
grander, if that makes sense. Like it looked nice before, but now that it has not only the glass, but the quartz on top of it, it's just starting to look a lot more impressive. I'm really liking how this is turning out. Anyway, entryways, we need some more materials for that. And we're running out of quartz. I don't want to go back to the nether. Thinking ahead, one thing we will need to change. I like these stairs. It's just they're going to have to move out one because of the design I'm thinking of. But now that I've moved it, I don't like that. Hmm. Okay, there's a potential way around that. Let's try something different. The interesting thing here is I want to make it look interesting and nice, but we need to consider that there's going to be bees in here and we need to make sure that they can't get out. Hmm. 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 I need some doors. Let's go with dark oak. I'm curious if doors will t attach directly to walls. No, they will not. Actually, since these trees are right here, and since I accidentally just picked up leaves, it's either that or logs, or something like that. So I know it's a mix of a lot, blackstone, quartz, leaves, and logs, but I think I like that. I think that's gonna be the way we go. Then maybe bring it up a little bit on top. Now that looks weird. That's weird. I don't like that. Actually, I didn't check. Can I? Yeah, it looks like the doors are flush. So that should work. Okay. I think I'm happy with this. The problem now is I'm going to have to replicate that on all the sides. Oh, I'm definitely going to mess that up. Okay, I think I did it. I think I replicated it. Now we just have to continue it on on all the other corners. All right. So it looks very impressive. Why are the doors like that? Kind of took the window out of my sails a little bit there, doors. That's better. Anyway, looks nice. I don't think bees can penetrate the defenses. And as far as I can tell, I think we're ready to start on the dome. And that's actually where I get worried because in my head, all we need to do is walk around the edge of this and start placing blocks one in and up. And then when that's done, we repeat the process, walk along the edge of the glass, place one one in and up I just think it's probably not going to end up being that simple and I don't want it to look weird at the end I also did want to incorporate quartz into that in some way you know what though I don't really think there's any other way to do it but just start trying and see how it turns out and with that in mind oh no okay so I didn't think about the fact that we used slabs here not necessarily a problem though we can just start it down here instead of up one and then i was also worried about this it does look like the glass will connect to the walls so that won't give an opening for bees to escape all right so let's just go all the way around see what it ends up looking like and then we'll see if it's easy enough to uh, continue the pattern all the way up it's also a really good thing that we're not building this glass straight up with the same circumference all the way around because it would just take forever. There would be so much glass, by which I mean every level that we go up, we're also gonna be going in. So every circle that we have to make is gonna be a little bit smaller. Hopefully that means we'll be saving on resources. But there we go, there's the first circle. Now we can use a temporary block. Actually, we're gonna have to use a lot of temporary blocks. Oh yeah, that's gonna be fun. I think I should just go through and prep the whole thing rather than as I go. Helps me keep in the groove a little bit more. I'm gonna be shattered if I get up a few layers doing this and realize I'm doing it wrong. In fact, I'd probably just hide that it's wrong and hope that nobody notices. Okay, so that is one layer down, or I guess two layers down, which can only mean we get to start on the next layer. Oh man. This is one of those tasks in Minecraft that's both mind-numbing and satisfying at the same time. I could probably do it for a couple hours and not notice that those hours went by, but potentially at the end, I may want those hours back, if that makes any sense. Oh no, I'm out of glass. We did a decent amount, but we need to go back and visit the nerds. This actually isn't too bad. It doesn't take long to just run through here and reload. Could be much worse. All right, we're stocked back up and ready to get back at it. Seeing as we have some time to chat again while we're working on this, I have something else that I need to admit to you, citizens. The reason I am building a bee habitat is simply because I found bees. 
I have them. I want to add them to the base. And that is about the long and short of it. What I'm getting at here is once I have them, I have no idea what I'd like to do with them. I know I can regularly come back in here and harvest the honey, but what should I do with that? I am certain that there are uses for it and cool things that we could do with it. I just personally don't have any ideas. Up till now, you've all been beautiful, you've all been lovely, you've been helping me in the comments, you've been giving me tips and tricks and things that I can do, but once again, I am calling upon your wisdom. Once this is complete, let me know what would be the best way to, to use any of the honey that I'm harvesting from this bee habitat. Because don't get me wrong, I'm definitely going to do that. I'm not just going to leave it. Anytime I see that those uh, bees' nests are full, I'm going to harvest that and store it. But let me know. Leave me a comment. Let me know what I should be doing with that stuff because I'm sure there's you know farms or useful things that I could be doing with it. Just no ideas from this guy. And there is another layer down. Removing all these temporary blocks, it's just barely satisfying Scoopy-Doo. It's basically just wetting his appetite. He yearns for the hills. He really wants to take down all of that. I'm sorry, Scoopy-Doo. I just don't need more dirt right now, so this is going to have to do. Ooh, okay. That layer took noticeably less time to complete. Either that or my slow descent into madness has progressed into a moderate descent into madness. It's also getting very difficult to see where I should be placing these temporary blocks because all of the layers are starting to blend into one another. So I worked into the night and now it's morning, so let's go take a look. Okay, I mean, it looks uniform and that's what we want. The one thing I didn't do was add the uh, the quartz into this in any way. I think we can do that after the fact. We'll just get some slabs and do the pattern that I had in mind afterwards. So not a big deal there. I think it's turning out the way I intended. So let us continue working, finish up the dome, and then we'll do any sort of pattern over the top that we want. Come to think of it, I'm sure there's a clever tool online somewhere that just tells you how to make the perfect perfect dome or make it in an appropriate shape. I know I've seen it on other channels. Like I'm pretty sure Wax Fraud made something like this, but it's more satisfying this way. Just kind of throwing caution to the wind and giving it a shot without that type of thing. Because then if it turns out, you can get a big smile on your face and say, look what I did. I can hand it off to all of you. You could tape it to the refrigerator for a bit, make me feel good, all that type of thing. Now that we're getting closer to the top, I did have an idea, but I'm not sure if it's too gimmicky. What if when we just had a few layers left, instead of this regular glass, we got yellow and, oh, beautiful. Been a while without rain, but it just always has to interrupt me. It has to start when I'm trying to talk. Every time. Anyway, what if I got yellow and black stained glass and alternated layers so it had sort of a bee design on it? Like I said, I think that might be a little gimmicky. Plus, it's not only a, a bee habitat, it's also our compass courtyard that we've had for a while, so I don't know if that's like the total full design that I'd like to go with. Okay, let me tell you what I'm thinking here, citizen. We are now officially above the level of trees, and I think if we continue like this, we're actually going to get pretty high up there as the dome goes. So since we're above the trees, I think now every level... We start going in two instead of one. What do you think? Do you agree? Is that a good plan? I hope so, because that's what we're going to do. Trouble there is it's going to throw me off. I'm so used to doing one. Now we're going to have to do two. I think I'm doing it right, but we won't really know until we see the end result. Which, yes, that's worrying. Yeah, now that I've done two, this is confusing my tiny noggin. I can't place the temporary blocks in the same spot that I'm used to, so I'm just hoping this is going to turn out... Oh no. I haven't been showing all the times I trade to get more glass, but I just ran out again. So we have to go down and get more. There is no way you need more emeralds from me, but you're going to take them, aren't you? Why won't you refresh? I need more emeralds. Come on. Oh, lunchbox. Why won't they just be kind to me? I'm starting to kind of want to alternate between going in three and two now. Yeah, I think let's at least do one layer. That's three. Feels like the end is in sight. We're nearly to the center. This is the day we finish the dome, Garfield the cat. I feel it in my bones. I mean that and the fact that there's just this little area left. That was a good indicator as well. And it seems to be uniform as well, which is shocking. I can't believe I made it through this entire thing and didn't screw up the pattern. 
as I went through it. It's unbelievable. Oh man, what an adventure. But we are finally done. Let's take a look at all the hard work. <laughs> That looks so cool. Something I wasn't expecting looking at that, it almost looks futuristic, like a, a force field around the, the original courtyard that we built, but I, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. I think that is very cool. I almost wish there was a way to incorporate the, uh, the beacon into there because that would look pretty awesome if it came right out the top. We would need a... I'd prefer to have four because there are four glass blocks right at the top of that. Maybe in the future, but... Either way, it, it took a long time, but I think it was worth it. Although looking at it from this angle, that looks strange. It's way too pointy at the top. Um, let's change this around a little bit. Still too pointy, I think two more layers, one or two. Okay, I think that's better. Let's just flatten it out there. Yeah, I didn't think about that. A dome is not pointy. It actually flattens out at the top. So let's just fill all this in. There we go, much better. Yep, still looks good from up here. And now if we fly down, we're not going to see the, like a, a tip at the, the very, well, little bit. I think I'm going to leave it as is for now. If that ends up bugging me from any angles, I might just remove one or two more layers and flatten it out. But I think this is okay. Come to think of it, I have not been inside this thing once. Let's actually go in and see what it looks like. Wow, look at all of the uh, kind of reflections coming down through this. You know what else it reminds me of? Apart from a greenhouse, that is. It's kind of a dystopian future where the only place you can live is underneath a dome. If you leave, the air is not breathable. This is the only paradise in which we can live. All that is to say that I'm pleased with how this turned out. And now we can get around to adding the bees. I did forget about the quartz. I was going to put a little bit on top of that. I think I'll hold off on that for now. I want to just hang around it, use it for a little bit, see if I prefer it this way. If it turns out I'd prefer a design on the top, then I'll get back to it and I'll, I'll add that. But I am very curious. Let me know what you think of this build because it's a bit unique for me. I don't typically build things like this and especially with the design on the side, how we have the, the water inside the walls, different kelp and bubbles going through. I'm curious what you think about this and if you would have done anything a little bit differently or if you have thoughts for me what i can change about this to make it look a little bit better luckily i did not lose the bees they're all still in here hopefully they haven't minded just kind of being stored in a chest for the last however many days this is gonna take some getting used to i keep getting startled coming out of the house and seeing this i'm so used to it being open oh man i love that i love that there's the bubbles going through and it's interactive that's very cool one thing i didn't think of is where should the bees nests go because i could just randomly place them around in the trees and the leaves in the center but i'd prefer for them to be a little bit more lined up in an area that it makes it easy to collect the honey actually before we do that i did bring more flowers let's place all of those down first see all that flower collecting while we were out in the last video it's paying off now when all the bees come out and see this they're gonna lose their minds never seen so many flowers in all my life I think I'm giving an even distribution throughout here, so everything's all fair. There we go. Doesn't that look nice? So for the bees, it's either going to be bees, it's going to be BB. Anyway, I either want to put them along the sort of dividing path here on each side or somewhere out here by the edges. I think though this might be a little too far. If I were going to place them up here, for example, they're going to have to go out here to the flowers, come on back. It's not that great a distance, but I'd rather have it be in the middle of everything in here. Actually, I just realized as well, I'm going to need campfires. Also look at this little secret crafting table. Can't really see it from many of the angles, but it's still here and available. That's me being crafty. You get it? Crafting table, being crafty with a crafting table. Yeah, I know it's not that clever. I also kind of want it to be overflowing with bees. And I've only got five right now, but I know you can craft more once these are in. So why don't we say, maybe if we do four on each side, so that would be nice and even if I had four on each side. Once again, I'm a bit worried. Actually, you know what? I was about to say if putting campfires here would burn anything down. I did see a comment on the last video that said we I didn't actually need to worry about that. It shouldn't burn things down. Maybe that changed in an update or something. I think it's worth a try. You know, I just kind of wanted it out in the open. So why don't we do that? We'll use these four spots on each pathway. Campfires underneath, and then we should be in business. 
in case you're curious, there's not really a purpose to these slabs that I'm putting down. I just wanted to change up the design, make it clear that those are the spots that the bees nests are going to go in. They don't actually have a functional purpose or anything like that. All right, so I think we're all set. We'll try to distribute these. So we've got five to work with. So if I put one, two, three, four, and five... Yeah, see, I'm, I am noticing those sparks popping out, though. That makes me a bit nervous. Trouble is, I don't know what else can burn. I know that the wood can, and so I just want to watch this for a minute, the sparks falling on the slabs to see if that does anything. The trees can burn. I don't know... Yeah, the leaves can burn. I don't know about the flowers. That worries me if the flowers can catch on fire. I mean, it looks good so far. I'm going to trust you guys. I'm going to trust you in the comments that these aren't going to burn anything down because I see these sparks flying everywhere. And I'm just going to, we're going to say, no, that's cool. It's not going to burn down this entire area. But anyway, let's start placing down the bees nests. Hey, buddies. They popped right out. They are happy to see their new home. Whoa, look at him. You're so excited. Well, let's get you some friends in here. Uh, Are any going to come out of that one? We can wait. Ooh, I left the door open. I want to try to keep track as well. I know I just saw two. We should also probably breed them so we have a larger population in here. Ooh, and there's three in that one. Nice. Put you here and you there. Well, hello. Very nice. So I think we're nearly done. We've got all of the bees now enjoying the beautiful flowers that I laid out for them. They're already getting to work. I can see that the honey is starting to come out of these. And the last thing is I just want to fill it out a bit more. So we'll do some breeding, try to get a few more bees, and then also craft some new, I don't know what they would be called when you craft them, new bees nests, and fill this out just a little bit more. We're also going to need some shears. All right, so hopefully nobody gets mad at me. Look at that. First honeycombs. Does anybody want some flowers? Look at that. It's a little baby bee. Yeah, you can have all the flowers. There you go. Oh man, the baby bees. I love this. Who hasn't gotten a flower yet? You all have. Okay. Wow. There are a lot of you and I love it. All right, off you go. Go have some fun. And actually, I don't know if I explained, the reason I have the campfires here is because it's an old Roman tradition. We actually really enjoy uh, smoked bees for dinner, so that's the reason we have those campfires. I'm realizing that I might have placed these wrong because the part where I can see if it's full of honey is off to the side, and that's going to be covered up. I didn't realize it only shows on one side. Could cause some issues in the future. Actually, are they going to get mad if I take this down? Because I kind of want to change that. Eh, I could always run for it. I want to give this a try. Eh, nobody seemed to get upset, so I think I'm good. Ow. There we go. Now they're all facing the front. Let's go back to our secret crafting bench. So now we can make candles with honeycomb and string and beehives. Actually, we have enough to make a beehive now. We may as well. Boom. First beehive. Artificial, of course. Oh, I need another campfire. I should just craft a ton of those. I think I need about 27 more of these. Okay, so there's 27. What was the other thing I wanted to get? I don't remember. Hopefully these things fill up pretty quickly because I'd like to, if I can, you know, fill out most of this area. Okay, so yeah, are they all full? All but one, nice. I will take that, thank you. We should be able to move through this pretty quickly then. Already got five new beehives. I'm assuming they'll just automatically go into the new beehives, like the little baby bees that we made. They should just take up that space. But we should also keep on top of um, breeding the bees so that we can fill all of these up. Speaking of, is anybody ready again? How about you two? Oh, you certainly are. We good for one more? Uh, nope, not you. You and you. Bring me more bees for my legion. This is going swimmingly. I half expected to come in here and just start getting attacked by bees, do something wrong, burn down the whole area, but going well so far. Oh no! A bee just went into the campfire! Don't go- what are you doing? Don't go in there! How do I stop them from doing that? Uh... I don't know. Do I put those down into the ground? They can still get in though. Hopefully most of them aren't going to do that. Because the only thing I could think of is putting them underground and then trying to put some slabs around it to cover it up, but I, that's not going to look very nice. Nice, nice. Keep that honey coming. Yeah, with all this, we could start a little artisanal farm stand, take it to the farmer's market. We're going to make so much money off of you bees. But not really. I don't, I don't think you can actually trade any of this stuff for emeralds. That I'm aware of. <laughs> I love the noise it makes as they go in and out of the beehive. It's like a bloop. 
which is definitely the sound that bees make. Hey buddy, how'd you get in here? Bee cat. Make more bees. Yeah, I mean, these have to be one of my favorite mobs in the game. And come to think of it, I don't think I've ever made a bee habitat before. So this is a first. You're all very lucky to be the first Roman bees in my world. So what do we have now? How many do I have total? About 14 total. That is not bad. Should I keep going or do we just call it there? Maybe one more day. I'll keep breeding the bees, creating more hives, and just make sure that we can have it as full as possible. Don't get too close to that fire. But it's so tempting. The fire calls to me. Well, don't give in. Are you stuck? Here we go. I'm definitely overly excited about all of this. There's so many things that I've done for the first time in this hardcore world, and anytime I do, I just get totally stoked. I think that's fair. I mean, look at these little guys. It's fair to be excited. The good news is they do all seem to just stay within this area, hang out by the flowers and the hives. I'm not seeing any go up there and get stuck or even try to make a break for it and head for the doors. That was one of my concerns, and I'm happy to see that they're behaving themselves. I did it again, behaving themselves, and that one was not even intentional. Well, there's one row completed. While we're waiting, I did think of one thing I should do. Let's grab this bone meal, or at least some of it, and collect some flowers out here, just so we have what we need to keep breeding the bees. Yeah, two at a time, that's helpful. Actually, what am I doing? There is no need to do it that way. I don't know why I didn't think about this sooner. We kinda have a lot of flowers already available. And we should clear some of this out since we're here. Brought some more goodies for you. Gotta keep the population growing. When the little ones get close to my face, it's really hard to tell if they're adult or babies. Like, look at that. When they get right up next to me, they look like adults. No, 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 get out of there! Ugh. They keep going into the campfires. I think the last thing, since this was the last day I was going to work on it, why don't we put a chest down here? Might move that eventually. It's kind of conspicuous but for the time being we'll leave anything that we need for this process in this chest and eventually we can put honey in here as well but i think with that we should be all set now that we've completed the dome out there and the bees are nice and happy flying around it's probably time we do something about this and even before that walking by here i think i want to replace this the the dirt at the back wall that's kind of a part of my house for some reason. When I built the house, I think I even commented on that and I just never got around to it. Every time I come up here and look at this, it makes me feel like I've been living in a hole in the ground. Not a nasty, dirty, wet hole filled with the ends of worms and a newsy smell, but a legion hole. And that means comfort. So first we can hit it with a little bit of scoopy doo and then just fill that right in. Just to make it a little bit more interesting, we'll change up the color on this. And there we go, boom. Suddenly it's a part of the house, no longer a dirt wall. And now we have to figure out what we want to do with this since it burned down and I don't feel like rebuilding it exactly the same. I like how it exposed the axolotl tank, so we are going to keep that. What if we did something like this, adding logs as support beams around, but didn't actually fill it in with anything? More of like a just big patio area here. Yeah, you know, I think that works. Let's wait for morning and then look at it from a higher vantage point, but I think this will do the trick. All right, so now we've got a new vantage point up here on top of the dome, and I think I like that. We've got this side that's pretty much the same. This side is partially repaired. Difficult to see, though. And if we look over here, you can see just with the support beams, it almost gives it like a fantasy ruin type of look. Like it's been repaired, but only partially, and I'm a fan of that. So we will leave that as is. We may do some more changes in the future, but for now, I'm happy with that. And since we just did the minimal repairs on the house, and we just recently completed the new bee dome with the super cool walls with kelp and bubbles and all that type of thing, gonna take a quick break from building. And what I think we're going to do is head back into the nether just for a little bit because I want to see if our luck can be any better on the wither skull drops. In the last video, it took forever to find three to fight the wither. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time in there, but I do want to try just to see if we have better luck. And if we can, we'll do another wither fight and get another beacon so that we can expand that into a double. I am not going to hold my breath though. Also, let me know if the footage of the nether looks a little bit better in this video compared to previous videos. 
I played around with the shader settings a little bit to try to make it so, I don't know if you noticed, I tried some post editing to make it a little bit brighter, but it just, I couldn't get it to look right. And now, oh, hello, you're what I'm looking for. Now I shouldn't have to do anything in post. It should be bright enough, but let me know. Compared to the last video, is the nether footage any better? And apparently drops hang around for quite a while in here because I haven't been back here since the last video and I'm still seeing some things sitting around on the ground. There's a gold sword over here. So apparently that just sticks around for quite some time. I will say the change in shaders is making it easier to see the enemies too. So that's very helpful. Do skeletons always spawn in like packs of three or four in the nether? Because I've never seen just a single spawn. There's always a few of them together. I just realized I'm wearing my elytra. That's not safe. Yep, I should be wearing the mood plate. It's not like I ever get hit or anything like that, but you know, you gotta be safe. I'm also stuck in my ways, so even though I said I didn't want to be down here for a while, and I don't... Whoa! Hello! I still am going to do the same process which I did last time, and that was collecting these nether bricks so I could expand the platform up top and hopefully give a better spawn area for wither skeletons. They do continue to spawn, so it's working, just, you know, not quite fast enough. Sneaky, sneaky ghast. I feel really safe with all these lava drops hitting me on the forehead. This is in no way a dangerous situation. You just gonna stand there and burn? Okay. We're back to that point when I can really only find a wither skeleton once every couple of minutes. And I'm not a huge fan of that. So I think what we do now is what I pretty much said I was never going to try to do again. And that is make all of these old boys very angry and essentially start taking them all out. So we lower the uh, lower them taking up the mob cap and give these wither skeletons an opportunity to spawn in. And after a little bit of that, if it doesn't work, why are you running away? Anyway, if it doesn't work, then we'll just head on back and call this a uh, call this a lost cause for now. At first, I don't think I'm even going to bother trying to bridge up or tower up at all. I'm just going to run around and smack at him, lower the mob cap. Oh man, I'm going to regret this, aren't I? Let's go. Yep, bring it on. Come on, everybody. May as well get together before we start. Yeah, see, it's starting to work. They are spawning now. And we just keep doing this, taking a few out at a time. And the random zombies that like to spawn in with them. Oh, boy. Okay. This is when we bridge up to heal. Get rid of the annoying blaze. You know, for the nether, there's a lot of zombies down there. All right, after all that, a couple did spawn in. So let's check with you. Oh, they totally missed that. How about you? Do you want to be nice to me? No, you do not. Over here is where we got a lot of our luck last time. And again, three spawning in. I don't know what it is about this area, but wither skeletons love it. Ooh, I think I just saw a drop. I think I picked it up. I think we got one. Okay, so at least we got one. Whoa. You are making terrifying noises. We're starting to attract these at least. Whoa, I didn't notice there were so many following me. Honestly, I'm used to this by now. It's like this anytime I go out shopping. Tons of fans just throwing themselves at me. Oh, Legion, we love you. Please say hi to us. It inevitably ends by me just whacking them all with my sword. I think we are just about done. I haven't seen a wither skeleton in, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, and that seems to be my limit. So we got one at least. We'll maybe come back a little bit later, try our luck. Can I help you? I'm trying to talk here. Anyway, we will try again later. Now that we're back, we just need to drop off the spoils. As for the nether rack, you go directly into my incinerator. Ah, listen to it burn. Side benefit of doing this, we do get a ton of gold and I won't complain about that. There we go, 59 gold ingot from that trip. Not too bad. And now that that's complete, why don't I tell you a little bit about what I'd like to work on next. And this is a good news, bad news situation, by the way. The good news is we are finally going to work on the nether portal. So it's kind of like speaking of being in the nether, now we're actually going to be working in the overworld, but we're going to be upgrading the nether portal itself. The bad news is we are going to have to take down the beacon temporarily because it's kind of right in the way for what I have in mind. So to begin, we're going to take down the beacon, line up a path that will go into the new nether area, 
and then start building essentially the the short version it's going to be kind of a, a lighthouse slash nether portal entrance room so we'll get to that a bit more but first we do have to take this down one thing to think about, we did go through a lot of trouble to fix the nether portal so that it actually lined up with the one at my base so we didn't come out at some random portal under the ocean. And to do that, we had to square up its coordinates, essentially. All that is to say, I do want to make sure whatever we set up here, the nether portal is in the same place as it is now, or at least near enough so that that still lines up when we go into the nether. So I'm just kind of brainstorming right now, and if this is the way the path leads out... And I don't necessarily want to move the coordinates of the portal. Maybe I can just make it kind of huge and it'll count as being in the same coordinates. It's not the end of the world if we have to move it again in the nether. I just, if I don't have to, I'd prefer to keep it where it is. So I'll leave that there for now. In any event, I am going to need to make another circle here to give us the foundation of what will eventually be a kind of tower or lighthouse. And my thought is you'll walk into the front of it and the nether portal will be inside. So let's just make a completely random guess and say that we want to start right here. And we'll make this circle all the way around, see if it sort of matches up and meets the expectation of what I'd like to do. I'm getting deja vu from building that dome. It always pains me to do this, but we're going to have to break the nether portal. Oh, there we go. Something's going to go wrong. The circles are giving me trouble again. Something isn't seeming right. That's definitely not right. Okay, I think I have an idea. If we bridge up in the center, and this might be part of the issue, is that the center is actually two blocks and not one, like it should be in my head. Or four blocks, technically. So this is the center of the circle. What I'm thinking is, because it's giving me trouble trying to figure it out from the bottom and just building up, I want it to be wide at the bottom, get thinner as we move up, and then maybe wide again at the top, and it's raining again. Beautiful. But anyway, this is where the thinner part in the center will start. So why don't we build a circle up here, and that way all we have to do is make sure that the bottom matches with the circle that I build here. Can you imagine the amount of OSHA violations I'm having right now? Working in the rain, not wearing a harness, no ladders or scaffolding, just kind of walking around in this slippery wet stone. This is probably not the most efficient way to walk around and try to place blocks. Plus I have to keep going back and trying to remember where I placed dirt and remove it. I'm not sure how this is turning out. Let's go up and take a look. Okay, that's actually not bad, and you can see what I'm going for, kind of a menacing vibe. And I'm using polished blackstone as well as deep slate tiles. I kind of want to throw a third one into the mix, maybe some stone, some stone brick. Let's clean this up and then go grab a bit of that, see how it looks. Let's see if this fits in well. While we're up here, we'll also place a couple adornments, just to make it look a little bit more detailed from a distance. So I'm going to build it up from here, but I do have plans for something running down the center of this. So I think we just do the outer edges. Also, that just scared me. I looked inside there and only saw the smoke and fire. I thought it was everywhere. I thought everything inside here was on fire, but I think it's just the campfires. Yeah, we're safe. Calm down, Legion. We'll be all right. Something like this should work. Yeah, that should look pretty good. This is going to be difficult. I don't think I can land this. Ooh, nope. I missed. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Back to using dirt. I am getting a little bit better at these jumps, though, so that when you land, you don't take fall damage, because you place a block as you land. I think that's a decent height. Before I do more at the top, there is something else I need to set up down here. All right, now we have a floor in here, so it's not just dirt and sand, which is a bit odd. Lit the place up. It is mainly nether portal. Haven't actually tested the portal yet, probably should have done that, but it's too late now, so I say we just keep going with it. Okay, so the inside isn't looking too bad at all. There is one last thing I want to do before the this day ends. Once again, having to land up here. Hey, I did it that time. Not quite sure how to do this part, but I know what I'm trying to do. Alright, I'm playing with fire again, guys. Send help. So the idea here is that the lava should fill the center tower without going down into the lower area because I blocked that off and provide light, hopefully from a decent distance and also look pretty cool while it's at it. So at least from this angle, it's working. Let's go down and take a look. Oh yeah, look at that. So you can see it's spilling down there. 
should stop because I put glass and a roof right there, but from all angles it's going to give off light and it's almost like an animation effect because of that, because of the lava falling, so it's going to look real cool. Let's actually try to go around it. Yep, so you've got that from all angles now. Very cool. I will have to be careful not to accidentally fly through there because I didn't put glass <laughs> on that part or anything, so that's a big safety hazard. I also missed a piece of dirt right there. Haha, <laughs> gotcha. And from inside, you can also see it, as well as catch the little lava droplets on your tongue. And it also lights up the room a little bit. So I think now all that's left is testing the nether portal and adding the top uh, to this thing. I'm about to fly up there, and I'm pretty sure I didn't put anything over the top of the lava. So once again, I'm going to have to try not to burn myself alive just by doing the simplest thing, like flying up to a, the top of a build. All right, we can do this. Oh, man, I don't know if I can do this. Ooh, no, 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 no. Okay, try number two. Oh, no, so close. I am terrible at this. I keep landing right there. You know what? There we go. Yay, I did it. Now, how do I want to build the top of this thing? Obviously, we want to see the lava, so we need to cover that part with glass. Maybe put down some walls for detail on the outside lanterns on the corners and then we're actually going to be covering this part up with a floor but i think from down there that should add a nice bit of detail and for the floor i think i want to go back to the circle almost as big oh no i did not mean to do that fat fingered it as i was saying i want to make a circle just about as big as it is down at the bottom so it should be about that size and i think that'll be good you would think making circles would get easier, but it does not. Go around and get rid of the temporary blocks, and then we just fill in the center. Yeah, I think definitely for this whole thing, I've just been making it up as I go along, but it's turning out okay. I still want to go around and take a final look when we're finished with this part, see if there's anything else that needs to be done. Yeah, I can already see a problem with this. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy with it. I think it's looking good so far. But just looking at it, it's something about it is very weird. Can you see what it is? If you're looking at it from a distance and just uh, kind of taking it in as a, a whole structure, there's one thing that really throws me off. I like the base of it. I like the uh, central lava pillar. The top is nice, but it's way too small. Compared to the rest of it, it's just like, it's almost like why have that platform up there? Something is missing. And I can't tell if I want to build it out further on the sides or if I want to build something on top, almost like a, kind of like a stone canopy over the top of it. Let's start by building this part out a little bit more and just see if that changes anything. This is precarious. I'm kind of free-forming again. I have no idea how this is going to look, but it's an idea, and it should add something to it. It'll definitely make it bigger, and that's what the problem I had with it. All I did was added some little pointy bits to the, the edges of each of these, and then I'm going around with a different block, leaving one space in between. It's in no way functional. I don't intend to get any use out of this, but I think it'll add something to the look. Okay, so that's a bit. Let's go take another look, see if that did anything. Ooh, I th I think that helped a lot, actually. I like that it's not connected. It's one of those kind of breaking physics things, but that is very cool. It's close. It might need a little bit something extra. I don't know what that is yet, but for now, I say we leave it and just kind of digest a little bit. Keep looking back at it. It might come to me, whatever I think this is missing. Or I might just fall in love with this and decide that I want to keep it, so... We'll, we'll come back to it, maybe we won't, but let's just keep looking at it in passing as we uh, work on other things. But overall, what do you think? How do you like the, uh, the nether tower? It's called the nether tower, but I haven't even tried the portal yet. That's probably what we should do next, see if that even links up properly anymore. Definitely an upgrade from the previous one. How heartbreaking would it be if we built this entire thing and then I looked back and it wasn't actually lined up with the courtyard? Luckily, that's not the case, but I, I wouldn't even know what to do. I'd just cry and go to bed, probably. I think that would be a good idea to make sure that this portal actually works. Should make this room look cooler, too, because right now you can see through to the back and it's just kind of bare. But once we light this bad boy... Uh... Can you not build portals this large? Or is it because I'm missing some of the obsidian here? Oh no, I know what it is. You were probably all watching me building this, kind of yelling at your screen, like, hey, that's not going to work. Hey, Legion, you're dumb. 
at least I think I know what it is. It can't be circular like this. It has to be more rectangular. So if we take out these side pieces, so we remove the sides and then I think if I put them back here, that should probably work, I think. Let's give it a go. Yeah, that was what it was, okay. Yep, I'm dumb. I wasn't thinking about that, but small mistake. We fixed it, no worries. Now the big question, is this gonna link up to the appropriate portal back in the nether or not? So let's dive in, find out. Fingers crossed. Hey, look at that. We have successfully figured out nether portals and made them work properly. Although we didn't test it the other way around to see if we come out in the proper portal as well. But before we test that, I think we need to go say hi to our wither skeleton friends and see if they want to be nice to us. Don't worry, I'm not thrilled about it either, but I do want more beacons. Well, I see at least one over there. Oh man, look at the mess we left last time. Hey boys. No luck. I was hoping the first one we saw would just be nice, but no. Wither skeletons, where are you? Ooh, four of them just spawned. Yes, please. No luck, I don't think. Yeah, what about you? Are you the lucky one? No, you are not. Maybe if I leave the area, then come back, it'll kind of reset the spawns. I'm not sure. On the topic of wither skeletons, I know that there are wither skeleton farms. I've seen that before. I've seen other people do that. I thought that was kind of the direction I was taking by uh, spawn proofing some areas and expanding the area of the, the nether brick. So while it's not a farm, I did think it would increase my chances a bit. Doesn't I don't know. I'm not sure if it's doing a whole lot for me. That might be a future 100 days. We actually build a legitimate wither skeleton farm. Oh, wow. So I was just running to try to reset the spawns, but I ran in the other direction. That's the nether fortress right there. It apparently spans all the way over to this side, and I wasn't aware of that. Maybe the spawns are better over here. Who knows? But this place is huge. Oh no, this is bad. Okay, I'm freaking out. This is terrible. Oh my gosh. I don't even know what happened. Something hit me up there. Oh man, my heart is pounding so fast right now. Wow, I was under the lava for quite a long time. Do not come over here gassed. I'm terrified. I'm just going in the middle of this. Oh man. Ooh. Yeah, I was, I don't even, oh yeah, I was building a staircase up so I could more easily get over to this uh, section of the nether portal. And then something hit me, I don't know what it was. Something hit me, knocked me off, fell right into the lava. It took me, I don't know, 10 seconds to get to the surface and I wasn't sure I'd be able to make it over here. I have the totem of undying, but oh man, that was terrifying. Oh, okay, I'm back up. Yeah, I was standing right up there. And then it just went right in down to the, I don't know if you can call that the briny deep, the burny deep. Okay, I am staying away from lava pools for a little bit. Oh man, I just saw a wither skeleton over here and it despawned. There's one more there, but there were two. Don't go anywhere. Ah, nothing. Hey, buddy. Oh, you need some help? You want to get up here? There you go. I'm gonna see if we can finish this staircase now that I've calmed down a little bit. Yep, so that dip in the lava was my big scare for this 100 days. I do not need another one. And I say if we don't see any wither skeletons over here in the next couple minutes, we uh, head on back. All right, that right there is our last hurrah. Got three right next to each other. If we don't get a skull, we head on back. Come on, come on. Nope. All right, that's enough for me. Let's, uh, let's head back to the overworld. Or we could take on these four first. They definitely seem to spawn in groups. And they all definitely seem to not drop skulls. And then Legion V left the nether in disgrace. Oh, and by the way, it works. I came out of the right portal. So, silver lining. That's a small bonus. This thing actually works. Even though we didn't get any skulls in there. Well, Garfield, at least now that I'm back, I can check in on the bees and see how everything's going over there. I bet we can probably wrap up what we wanted to do by uh, filling in those extra areas with beehives. So let's collect what we can and see what that gets us. Okay, 24 honeycomb. That's not terrible. And we only need six more beehives. And we easily made that many. 
I did notice that not all of the beehives had honey, so I'm thinking we don't have enough bees yet to fill all of these things up. And you know what that means. Where is everybody? Hey, where are your friends? You're all not trying to leave, are you? Okay, there's at least two of you. I had at least ten when I left. Where are they? Okay, now you're all coming out. There we go. There we- Whoa, okay. Hey, guys. There's enough to go around. Don't worry. Lots of baby bees. Okay, there we go. That's more like it. Gotta fill up all these hives. And we've gotta be getting there. I, I don't know how many go in each one. Something like three, probably. So maybe we do need quite a bit more. I've got a lot of hives here. But we're making progress for sure. Look at all these guys. One other thing I just remembered. We had talked about the fact that we've got Old Blue here, but he had like two brothers. And on our way back from the jungle, when we were getting the, the pandas, two of them just abandoned us. So what do you think, Lunchbox, you old nut? Should we head on back to the jungle, see if we can get those parrots back? And yeah, front flips are a yes, so appreciate it. So let's do that short excursion, see if we could find some of those parrots. It would be nice if there were some near the base so that we didn't have to risk having them whatever happened last time despawn or get lost. You are not a parrot. Nice try. You, however, are a parrot. No way, he just got on my shoulder. This is one of them. So they've been out here this whole time. He's actually tamed. He just came right over to me. The other one must be around here somewhere too. That is insane. I had no idea they stuck around and just waited for you. Ooh, look what else we just found, too. I bet if we need more axolotl, there's probably some down there. Okay, look who else just found us while we were looking at this cave. They're both here now. That is insane. I thought we were going to have to get new ones. I was sure you two were gone. Now, the big question is, will you follow me back home? Come on. Please tell me you can go faster than that. Ooh, there's another one. I mean, we're here. We may as well. There we go. Parrot for each shoulder, an extra one on the way. Now, are you going to follow me? I saw the hearts, so you should. I'm so popular. Okay, we are within sight of the base, and we've still got all three with us. I would use my elytra, but I'm afraid that would lose them. What if I swim? Are you... you're not coming with. What if I go over here? Okay, that did the trick. Then they'll kind of teleport to me. Still all here? They do keep making mob noises, and I'm not an enormous fan of that. But I'm just happy we've got a lot of new friends. Old Blue, I have some good news. Look who I brought. Now you all just need to sit down. Ooh, you like Garfield. There we go. One big happy family. Yeah, so that little excursion went much better than I was expecting. I can't believe that these two were just out in the jungle waiting for me that entire time. It's probably been close to 100 days since I've been out there and they were just kind of sitting in the tree waiting until I came back so that they can sit on my shoulder or follow me home. Pretty incredible, but happy ending. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. We already got parrots. Do you want to join us as well? Ooh, gotcha. Nope, 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 nope. Don't you want some fish? There we go. See, Garfield, I didn't want to leave you out, so I got you a friend as well. Ooh, different colored eyes too. Very cool. It's getting quite busy in here. I just thought of something that's probably worth looking into. Yeah, so if you've been with the channel for a bit, since the beginning basically, or if you've watched since 100 days, you'll know that I found a trident really early on. I have not touched it once since then. It's been sitting in the chest gathering dust basically. And I actually did get a comment about that, that I should uh, enchant it. And I think that was specifically so I could use Riptide to launch myself out of the ocean and use my elytra now that could come in handy but i'm thinking just enchanting it in general would be a good idea i don't however know if i have any of those enchantments that i would need i've seen channeling a couple times but i haven't seen riptide okay unless the boys in here have it i do not think i have it available currently uh, nope it does not look like it all right so you know what that means Need another lectern, and we need to send one of our plebs to college. While we're here, though, we can get the mending and unbreaking that we'll need. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember. You're my favorite. You're willing to give me mending for one emerald. What a nice guy. You too. Mending and unbreaking, both for an emerald. I will take it. Let's start by combining those two for a mending unbreaking book. Oh, no. My anvil finally had enough. Oh man, I don't know if we're going to have enough iron for this. Like I don't have dozens of stacks at the iron farm. There we go. 
Okay, we can start with this as a baseline, but we do need a name, of course. And I think this is very appropriate. Obviously, we got this trident from Neptune. And I think it's very clear that this isn't actually a trident. It was clearly Neptune's toothpick. This is really interesting because I've never really used a trident before. <laughs> and that's just, I, I don't know. I really like that you can do that. You just chuck it. Uh, yeah, that is super cool. And I get why you would want loyalty because it is kind of a pain to just have to chuck and then run over to grab it, pick it up every time. But I don't think that is the the fate of Neptune's toothpick. I think that's actually going to have Riptide instead of loyalty. But who knows, maybe we get a second at some point and then that could be our loyalty toothpick. Well, let's go make us a nerd. Okay, you've given me these trades the last three times. I'm going to need an actual enchanted book. Okay, you're trying harder, but that's not what I need. That's closer, but I've already got that one. Not what I need. Yeah, so if you missed the, uh, I think it was the 100 days video, there was so much of this. Just having to re-roll librarians, which is essentially just breaking the lectern. So they lose their job, placing it giving them a new one, checking what they got over and over and over again until they give me the appropriate enchantment. I also don't understand why they like stepping on it and gathering around it because I don't want to hit you with an ax. I mean, don't get me wrong, I would love to, but it's just this guy is in here and he probably wouldn't take it well. Out of the way. Seems a little bit safer doing it back here so the iron golems can't get at me even if they wanted to. And why? They have to keep switching who takes the job block. Like, I need a turn. Such a child. Yeah, you really don't need to crowd me. There's enough of legion to go around. Disperse. Okay, so I also don't think I have sweeping edge. I wouldn't mind that. I also don't know if I can get it on my sword. I've got a ton on it already. Eh... Nah, I could always come back and just keep rolling for that. I don't think I need it right now. Ooh, look at that, giving me just what I wanted. Well, at least it didn't take longer than a day to get this. Thank you. At some point, I'll come back and level you up more just to see what else you have, but not right now. Somebody else had impaling. I don't know if I can stack it on... Yeah, there you are. So I'd need quite a few of that, actually, to get to five, which I think is the cap. And like I said, I don't know if it stacks with Riptide. I I rarely, if ever, enchant a uh, trident, but I think it's worth trying. Let's see if anybody else has anything better. And if not, we'll go back and grab a few of those. No, it was just that one guy. All right, let's go get ripped off. Nope, I need more emeralds first. Okay, so I am going to need four of you. Ooh, just enough. One emerald left. And then what we want to do is combine some of the impalings and waste a ton of levels. Wow, why is it eight just to put two books together? Jeez. And 12 to get five. This is expensive. Anyway, we can at least get Riptide 3 on there, so that is good. And then let's see if it'll let us do impaling. It will. I don't know how many levels I started with, but we just blew through like nearly all of our levels, creating Neptune's toothpick. I think this might warrant a quick trip back to the uh, the XP farm. But before that, we need to take Neptune's toothpick out to the ocean and give her a try. A quick yeeting around the ocean. Okay, first time for everything. Apparently, I think we just do one of these where we aim up. Let's actually get out of the water and... Whoa! Yeah, and then we could use the elytra. And that was actually the reason that I asked about this or the, the comment that I got before. It was because I kept uh, falling into the ocean when I was flying with my elytra and could not get back out and I had to swim all the way home. So now, rather than doing that, all I'd have to do if I have the, uh, the trident is head on up and hit my elytra. There, we're good to go. Nice little life hack, I like that. I kind of feel though, since we've actually started using this like just now, like I should do a little spear fishing. Can I even do that? Let's find out if I aim at those guys over there. Okay, I need to be closer. Uh, hi -ya. Whoa, I think I got one? Where'd it go? Oh, I got it. Yeah, it works. Whoo! <laughs> that's one of those things that's never going to get old. Wow, you can go high with that. Hey, turtles, look what I can do now. I saw your friend Michelangelo over on the other island, but he doesn't get to see me do this. Watch. Are you watching? Watch this. hi -ya. Man, that launches you high. That is very cool. We will have to keep on a lookout now, because I'm pretty sure at some point Neptune is going to want his toothpick back. 
and we are right on the edge of his domain, so we'll just keep a lookout, but I don't think he'll mess with us. We're pretty overpowered now. Yeah, so enchanting that trident was worth it, but it did decimate our levels. We're at 23. Again, don't remember what I was at, but I know it was way higher than that. It's kind of like with your phone battery. Like if my phone battery was at 23%, I would lose my mind. I couldn't handle it. Anytime it drops below 50%, I need to charge it. Same thing going on right now. 23 levels, not good enough. Let's head to the XP farm, say hi to our aquatic llamas and trader. And yeah, we'll spend some time at the XP farm getting that level back up a little bit. Hello, creeper farm. And if you haven't seen it yet, I'd recommend going to check out my previous videos. We made that creeper farm, some of the other farms. Highly recommend checking it out. And there is our entrance to the end portal. Little cave to get through, up the stairs, and Bob's your uncle. So rather than heading over to the end island where all of our, uh, I don't know, let's call them our friends are hanging out over there, we're actually going to head this way to our XP farm. I haven't had this thing for that long, but I love it. I think probably my second favorite farm. My favorite's the creeper farm, but this one is just so cool. And incredibly effective, as you can see. All it takes is one swipe, and look at that. Tons of XP immediately. I noticed it was a bit dark. I just changed the shaders again. Does this look better than it did a second ago? I'm hoping it's a little bit easier to see. But anyway, we're gonna spend some time here, gain some levels, make myself feel good about the, uh, we'll call it the phone charge of my Minecraft character. I do wish I knew why these two, or really any of them, would keep spawning over on this side because I didn't think they could spawn on leaves or glass, but they keep doing it. Back to the grind of slaying enemies, and you know, that's just a day in the life for a legionary. If anybody needs ender pearls, I've got a couple to spare. I would leave all of these sitting here, but I'm worried it's going to break the end for me somehow. So let's get rid of a few of these and then we can pick up some more and drop them. This is the third inventory full of these that I've been dropping. I might have to just leave them till they despawn. It probably won't be a problem. All right, that's level 55. I think that's good for now. I say that we call it and head on back. We'll take the fast way back. All right, circle, aim for it, and we did it. Something else I also meant to do, and yes, we want a lot of water buckets for this. When we were out trying to find the uh, the parrots and we were in the jungle, I believe that's when it was, I saw that lush cave and I actually want to head back out there and explore a little bit. There's a good chance we'll find more axolotl there. And good job, lunchbox. Good job practicing your acrobatics. Keep at it. I'll be back in a little bit. And there it is. Easy enough. Ow. I wrote down the coordinates this time because I didn't want to lose it. I think it's also worth collecting some of the vegetation while we're out here just in case we need it for anything. I want that thing over there and I can't reach it. And yes, it's a that thing. I can't remember what it's called. A spore blossom. Actually, we could probably reach that one from the water that's right here. Hello. Get some more of these. Oh, yep. Look at that. I was going to say I see a lot of fish, but nothing else yet. And there is a creeper waiting to ruin our day. And a Skeletron. Ow. No spooky boys allowed. And definitely no creepers allowed. First, give me a couple more of these. Okay, where did our new best friend go? There he is. Bucket of Axolotl. So there is at least one down here, but I want to keep looking around a little bit. I also don't have much clay and no immediate plans for that, but we're kind of to that point in the game where we should just collect a bit of everything. We should have it on hand just in case we need it. All right, we're going to be stealthy and take out that spooky boy. Hey, buddy. Oh, I didn't miss. See, I told you. You can't hide. Pew. I'm going to regret this. I'm just going down a deep, dark cave. Oh no. Do you see what I think I see? This could potentially be very bad news because I happen to know that a scary customer lives down in these types of areas. And I mean, it's not like I don't want to take on the warden, but maybe not right now when I'm not prepared. I'm at least glad we found this in our world. That way, if we ever do want to come back and take this on, we can. And it doesn't look like this is actually an ancient city. It's just the, the deep dark, I think it's called, biome. So maybe there's not a warden here? I don't know. I'm not really interested in finding out right now anyway. How did something as innocent as getting some new axolotl friends turn into this? Okay, maybe we're finding our way back. Okay, I'm kind of done. How do I get out of this cave? Well, at least there's diamond down here. Just the one, huh? Oh, well. Ow. Ow. Okay, more of this type of stuff. Ooh, that is what I want to avoid and I just hit it. 
Uh, do we have to sneak? I do not want to mess with that thing. Slowly back away. <laughs> I just want to go home. Ooh, diamonds. There's got to be a way out here somewhere. Ooh, more diamonds and more spiders. Okay, abandoned mine shaft as well. I already know this isn't going to turn out well. I'm probably going to hit something and hop a totem, but let's try it anyway. Ooh, yep, ow. Close enough. I have to be getting close to the surface. I'm at Y level 37. I can't tell if there's a way out up there, but we're going to give it a shot anyway. Hoi. That did not go well. Ooh, there is a way out. I just heard a creeper. Nice try. Now, how do we manage this? Uh, eh, close enough. I doubt we're going to be able to figure out how to get back here, but I'm going to light it up just in case. Can't you tell I'm trying to do something here? No, sorry. I've already got plenty of you. Not interested. All right. Let's see if we can find our way back to base. Pretty sure it's over in this direction. Right into the rain. Ooh, right into the lightning. I do not want to deal with this. I want to get home to my bed. I want to go to sleep. I want to hide under the blanket. Sweet, sweet Rome. Well, that was quite the adventure. It looks like we did find a way to fight the warden if we ever want to do that in the future, but I do not think that that is in the plan for this video. What we can do is organize all of the loot that we got while we were out there. I did get more glow berries. I want to place some more of those in the, the bee habitat. Hey friends, y'all having a good time in here? Making me some more honey? Need to actually find places where these will allow me to place them down. I doubt I can do it on glass, right? Oh wow, I can. Ooh, that'll look cool. Yeah, let's go place them at random spots around on the glass. That would look awesome. It'll probably take a bit for these to grow. Actually, if they do at all, they might need more like darkness to grow. I'm not sure if that'll work, but either way, or. I don't know. I hope they do because I think that would look great. That was a good decision, Legion. Very well done. Give yourself a pat on the back. We also got a new friend for all of you. Let's see if we can do this without letting you all out. Should just need to break this. Place you. Put that back. And look at that. Oh, they're so happy. They love it in there. At some point this video as well, we need to get back to grabbing some name tags and naming some of the things around the base. Actually, there's tons of possibilities. I think we have, you know, horses, llamas, bees, pandas, a cat, some parrots. I think even these jerks could use some names. So maybe not immediately, but pretty soon I'll take a look through the comments and I'll see if there's any that we can use out here. Well, citizens, I think it's time for more of your favorite thing ever. And that, of course, is Legion V goes to the nether to try to find more wither skulls. I'm actually going to bring the one I found already with me so I can keep it in the hop bar. That way, as I'm picking up random stuff, it won't fill that spot and I'll be able to see if I pick one up and I just didn't notice it. Can we also just take a moment to appreciate how much better this nether portal is than the original one we had here? Little dinky one off to the side, not quite right, compared to a giant lava tower with an enormous nether portal in the middle. Definitely so much better. I bet Vitellius back home doesn't have something this great. Yeah, right, what a loser. I might try something a little bit different this time. Maybe if we check the original area for Wither Skeletons, just kind of run the length of this and see if there's any around. And then if there's not, or if we've cleared them all out, we'll run over to the second area of this uh, fortress that I found. Not looking for you. Definitely not looking for babies to take up my spawn cap. Nothing here. Let's go check the other one. And let's not fall down there again. Oh, I just saw one. Come back. Where are you going? Nothing. Good start. Ooh. At least they're spawning. I do think it makes sense to remove some of the walls in here, so at least we can see if there's any, you know, down a particular hallway without having to run through the entire thing. Yeah, I opened this up a bit, so hopefully that helps. Whoa. I just came back and there's a ton. Look at this. Why can't it be like this every time? I've got to get at least one from this. Please. Seriously? Please tell me the thing that dropped down there was one. Well, I don't even see it anymore, so I guess not. Okay, it's crowdsourcing time. What am I doing wrong? It took me so long in the last 100 days to get what I needed for a wither, and I've been doing this a decent amount kind of on and off this video, and I've only got one skull. I'm talking to you, citizen. You sitting there watching this. I need feedback. I need ideas. If you found something that works for you, 
to increase chances of getting wither skulls, please let me know. I will read the comments. I will incorporate it into one of the next videos. I just need a way to make this more effective. Let's check the other one. Don't despawn. Don't despawn. Not like it mattered. None of them are dropping anything. Also, my bow is nearly out. I'm going to have to make a new one before too long. Nothing over here in the random just long hallways of nothingness. I really don't need more blaze. I just want a second beacon for my base. Is that so much to ask? I will say flying from one area to the other does seem to spawn them in for whatever reason. I'm not sure why that's helping, but it does seem to be. Now the trouble is getting them to drop anything. I mean, I do have looting on here, right? Yeah, I just don't have RN Jesus on my side. I'm having a bad day and I'm gonna take it out on you. Don't do that in real life, citizens. Be nice to people. I'm allowed to here because it's just a game and these are just pigs. Goodbye. Okay, the flying over here trick worked once again. Gonna keep trying that. Get out of here. So like 5% chance per each. So that means I have a 20% chance to get one now. I don't know how statistics work. This is why I don't gamble. Hello. Boop. Ow, ow, ow. Ooh, I am actually getting kind of low. These blaze are driving me insane. Stay there, I'm coming. I'm pretty sure my game is broken because that's been about, I don't know, maybe 30 that I've taken out. Not a single skull? That doesn't make any sense. I am in no mood for either one of you. You, though, as many of you want to spawn in, I will be happy with. How did you get over there? I was fairly certain they only spawn on nether brick. Do not fall off. Ugh. Please step away from the zombified piglin. Not interested in upsetting them. Yes! Finally! You know, it only took like six to ten days down here to get another single skull. Okay, but hear me out. Last time, last video, we found the next one almost immediately, so maybe our luck is up. Let's go try to get the second one. Or third at this point, I guess. But we need a wither skeleton in order to test our luck. This isn't a good sign that I can't even find one now. Let's try to just go far away and then come back. Maybe that'll reset it. Ooh, what was that? Hot tourist destinations. I do not even know what I did. Maybe visited every biome, because I don't think I've been in this one yet. Crimson Forest. I think. In any event, whoa, lava falling. Let's see if those spawns have finally reset. Okay, at least one is back. Okay, there's a couple actually. All right, my guy, please, you could end this for me. Or not. What is going on over here? Think you're outmatched, pigs. Ooh, I should probably heal. That was a mistake. Ooh. And even with all of that, nothing. <laughs> Oh man, I did not mean to hit that zombified piglin. That's gonna cost me. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. I'll just ignore them and maybe they'll ignore me. This would be about 10 times easier if it wasn't for the blaze. No way. Did you see that? The one wither skeleton that I killed without my sword with looting on. Excuse me, I'm trying to talk. The one that I didn't use looting on was like, yeah, sure, I'll drop you a skull. I know you've got actually lower chances with this, but don't worry about it, I'll get you one. Oh well, in the end, doesn't really matter. Didn't even mean to make a song reference there, but let me know if you know which one I'm talking about. As long as I can be done and get out of here. Oh, a lovely day to come back to. Let's get indoors and then have a short chat. At least we've proven that I can get three wither skulls per hundred days. Doesn't take too long, I guess. Maybe about 10 days to do that. And the good news with that is we can potentially add one new beacon every video. I don't think I have it in me to do more than one uh, per hundred days. All right. And now that we're back, we're not going to fight the wither immediately. Actually, what I have in mind is we haven't uh, kept up with things around the base for a while, so I think today is going to be a chore day. Just harvest the crops, do some trades with the, uh, the trade monkeys, harvest some of the trees, you know, you know the drill. Do the melon run. It's kind of like the Kessel run, but with, uh, with produce. Here's something I haven't tried yet, actually. How about a sped up cinematic shot taking down all these big old spruce trees? There you go. Couple minutes for me, couple seconds for you. And I actually won't see that shot for probably a week or so until I get to editing. So how did it look? Let me know. Oh, no way. Horses can eat golden carrots. I didn't know that. That's why you were so interested in me. Don't be greedy. I've got to give some to the others. 
Hey, guys. Yeah, you're excited, huh? Here you go. Oh, you love the carrots. Oh, no way. I wasn't even intending to do that. Well, that is one way to fill up the stables. Okay, well, new friend. Born out of serendipity. So I've been reading some of the comments that have been left on uh, some of the previous 100 Day videos. And if you've been here since the beginning, you'll know that in one of the past 100 days, we built a raid farm. One of the things that you all told me is that because the farm worked well, except for when Vex started spawning and were giving me a really hard time, I could actually place down boats around where they would spawn and that should make it easier. So that is something I would like to try. And thank you for those comments, by the way. Keep them coming. Luckily, I've got a couple spare boats, but I'm going to make a bunch just in case. Is that not how you make a boat? No, this. There we go. <laughs> I didn't intend to make that many, but eh, whatever. You know the old Roman saying, you can never have too many boats. I thought I heard free leads. What are you doing on my land? Rooted dirt. What is rooted dirt? Well, unfortunately for you, none of that looks good to me, and I'm not really in the market for more llamas, so... I'm just going to leave you on your peaceful way and go and do whatever I was doing. No, you know we couldn't do that. They were trespassing. Anyway, now we need to go to the raid farm. And I actually had to think really hard about this. I didn't remember where it was, but I think it was past that ruined uh, nether portal. So I think it's over this way. Yeah, because there's the uh, pillager outpost. And the raid farm was right past this village. So right there. Like many of the farms I choose, simple and elegant. Really just a hole for them to drop into so I can take them out through this small little slit right here. Something I do want to change though is I found it was kind of difficult to hit some of the ones uh, further back there. I'm wondering if it would help if I moved the chest. Eh, maybe not because I don't want to get so close that they can see me and start spawning uh, Vex even though the boat should help with that. Let's leave it for now and just test with the boats. And I'm just going to place these everywhere to be honest. If they can help with those little pixie demons then yeah I'm just spamming these things. And I believe the idea here is that if they do spawn they'll get stuck in the boats and won't be able to follow me so I could kind of just take them all out individually rather than running away and just hoping I can move fast enough to avoid them. Yeah, that's probably good in here. Let's put a couple up top just in case. And if you think this is overkill, I mean, you have no idea. I'm terrified of Vex. I do not want to deal with them. There we go, all set. What does this remind me of? It's just like, I don't know, like a sailor convention, like when people get together and park their nice cars or their motorcycles in parking lot and they all just kind of admire them all. There's got to be sailors around here somewhere that are showing off their unique boats. Ooh, look, this one's a little bit of a different shade than this one. That is so nice. Now that I'm out here, I wish I had brought a bed with me so I could uh, make it daytime for when I start this raid. So let's go grab one, leave it over there, and start a raid in the morning. And the first thing to do in order to start a raid is to head over to the pillager outpost and challenge one of their standard bearers to one-on-one -on -one combat, which is not any of you. I just realized I should probably stop using the bow so much because I might need it for the raid and it's getting real low on durability he said as he takes out three enemies with the bow. Hey, so I would release you, but I'm sure you're in there for a reason. And you probably know what you did, but yeah, you're staying in there. This is like the wither skeletons all over again. Anytime you want to spawn in, Mr. Carries a Flag Man. Any day now. I wish I could just grab one of those and hand it to one of the guys and just be like, okay, that's good enough. There we go. Finally. I have been waiting for you. Thank you. Okay, it took forever and it means we're probably going to be fighting at night now, but at least we got it. I see you. Okay, we need to kind of give the village a wide berth and go around it just to make sure this thing triggers at my raid farm. All right, here we go. Da 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 da. So now we just need to get down here and hide. Come on, come on, there we go. So ideally, we'll just be able to stand here and take these guys out as they fall, and I just realized a flaw in my plan. What if they come from that direction and get stuck in the boats, and then they won't be able to fall? I wish I had thought of that before I started the raid. Also, for reference, we're just starting. That's what's in the chest, so we'll take a look when we're done and see what we get. And wave one complete. I should probably put on the move plate just to be safe. And second wave down. So far, so good. I still think this is so awesome. If you hit the bell and they're near enough, you should be able to see them through walls. There we go. So we can start to see them up there. I will say in the last one as well, we, uh, we did not have netherite on anything, so armor or sword. 
So that was a bit of a disadvantage. And that's wave three, by the way. Oh no, yep. Do you see that? If I ring the bell, they're starting to get stuck in the boats. And that's really bad because that means that could be an evoker stuck up there that's just going to start spawning vex as soon as we go up. So let's make sure we get everybody first and then we'll head on up there and clear out the boats. I think that's actually all of them. The rest are stuck in boats. All right, I did not think this through. Let's take care of this and then break the boats. Please don't be evokers. Okay, witches I can handle. Just hit them from a distance. And let's get rid of these because that was a terrible idea. And then we just get rid of you. Okay, no more boats. We should be good. We should be getting pretty close to the stage where evokers would start to be a part of the part of these waves. I think this is wave four or five. I lost count now. Okay, who's left? Oh, there's one. One still up there. Is he stuck? There we go. Oh, it was a witch. Okay, there was one in there. So, so far so good. We haven't seen any Vex spawn in. I think that was another one. I just saw a totem drop. Yeah, nice. Two more. Oh, there we go. I knew it was too good to be true. And they are getting stuck in the boat, so that's working out. Let's quickly take them out, make sure there's no evokers in there. Okay, this is actually working pretty well. Oh, and that was the end. So we only had one sort of mishap where they did spawn in. Get in a boat, you. Get in a boat. Fine. Your friend knew how to do it. So yeah, I mean, I think that one went better. I think only one or two were able to start these things spawning in. But that worked very well. Rather than having like six swarming around my head, they did get stuck and I was able to hit them more easily. So once again, thank you very much for the comments. That is helpful and clever by the way and look at what it got us five new totems of undying and some other goodies as well let's actually put the boats in here so we have more room in the inventory there we go take some of this stuff home i'm just gonna burn the crossbows i don't need them and there we go nice haul for a single raid all right let's head on home and store away the spoils of war we also need to take advantage of the hero of the village buff any trades we need to do now's the time to do it first and most importantly Look at that. Broke our first row of Totems of Undying. Incinerate these icky crossbows. And speaking of trading with villagers, we got a ton of rotten flesh in the nether. And I believe we can trade that with our Pontifex Maximus over at the house. Hey buddy, do I have something for you? Eh, 32 to 23. Not terrible, a little bit better. But it's not like I have a shortage of it, so doesn't matter. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting I can do that. And I'll take all the glowstone. Well, not too shabby. A little over two stacks of emeralds and 24 glowstone out of that trip. I will take it. And just so you're aware, yes, our wealth is building quite nicely. What is that? A little over a row of full stacks of emeralds and six blocks. And I told the plebs out there I couldn't pay them because I didn't have any money. Their fault for believing me. Yeah, looking at Potshot, it certainly served us well over the, the hundreds of days, but getting quite low on durability. So it might not be a bad idea to just prep uh, the new bow before we actually need it. So let's grab the books that we're probably going to need and then uh, yeah we'll just get it enchanted now. Also this is driving me nuts. I keep hearing zombies over here every time I'm trading with the stick boys. There's got to be something back here. Okay yeah I remember finding this and lighting it up but there must be areas I missed. Okay where are you coming from? I don't know maybe I just didn't light it up well enough. Okay with that distraction out of the way start putting the books together. This time, we're going to have Flame as well, because you'll notice Potshot never got it. So with Potshot, we had Infinity on Breaking 3 and Power 5. This new one is going to have the same, except also Flame, so just a little bit better. And as far as the name, I don't think there's a reason to reinvent the wheel. Why don't we go with... There we go. So it's pretty much Potshot. It's almost the same thing, except it's got Flame on it, so it's Spicy Potshot. The new and improved. Now we're all set for when Potshot decides to depart and leave this world. I have a question for you citizens. Do I look like a legionary that has serious dedication? Because I think it might be time to go for the serious dedication achievement. Side note, I absolutely love the uh, the description of this. Not only use netherite to upgrade a hoe, but after that, reevaluate life choices. Very good note for me. But the first step of that will be to actually make 
a diamond hoe, which we haven't done yet. And of course, we'll need to enchant it. But first things first. I normally wouldn't do this, but we're really not hurting for diamonds right now, so it does not bother me. And I think in this case, mending and unbreaking should be pretty much all we need. Oh man, but now it's the age-old question. What do we name it? We already have one of our pickaxes named Cleopatra's Silk. So I think for the hoe, we just go straight up Cleopatra. That works for me. The unfortunate part is that we only have a single ancient debris at the base, so we'll have to head to the nether and grab a little bit more, but three? That really shouldn't take too long. Okay, so the egg chest was absolutely overflowing, so we need to work on this a little bit. And yes, I know this is absolutely enthralling. This is cinema at its finest. I do need to remember, though, where we actually, uh... Oh, okay, never mind. I was gonna say where we were digging down to that level before, but I think I just found it. So here's where we were digging for netherite before, a mixture of TNT and just straight up digging. And I didn't bring any TNT, but you can see this is the result of that. And in any event, we're just gonna dig through until we find three ancient debris. There we go, that's what we're looking for. Two to go. This isn't the worst thing in the world, like the insta break isn't bad, but after, you know, 10 minutes of this maybe, I've kinda had enough. Ooh, yes! I was about to say I see number two, but I see number three as well. Not too bad, we really didn't have to be down here too long and we've already got what we need. All right, now how do I get out of here? Ah, uh, yes, the lantern to light the way home. Just in time for the sunset. Just need to smelt everything up and then we should be good. Right, we're good on the gold. Time to do the ancient Debris. I know it's debris, I just like to say Debris. Grab the netherite scraps. And as we learned last time, it kind of doesn't matter where these go. You just need four scraps, four gold, and that gives us our netherite ingot. Once we have that, we go over to the smithing table, throw Cleopatra on the table, chuck a netherite ingot in there, and then boom, we have a netherite Cleopatra. And look at that, serious dedication. That's me in a nutshell, standing there with my hoe, Cleopatra. Yeah, I know you're impressed, you don't have to tell me. Let's take her out for a spin. All right, so essentially no different at all from using our hands, but I do look better doing it now. I think people will take me more seriously too if I was just running around with my hands doing this, you know, nothing. But with another netherite hoe, now that's impressive. Also very difficult to do in third person. You know what, doing this though does give me an idea. Cause I've been trying to keep up on the beetroot farm. I don't get a ton every time I do it. And we trade with this guy so often, we are pretty much always low on beetroot. Yeah, so that's kind of the extent of what I have. It might make sense to actually make a an auto beetroot farm. What do you think? Would that be worthwhile? I'm thinking it might be. Also, look at this. Look whose glow berries have been growing. Adding a nice touch to the outer perimeter. Some of them are starting to, I guess, bear fruit would be how I'd say that. But strange that none of the other ones are. I'm sure they will eventually. No big deal. Yeah, you know, now that I said it, I do want to take that on next. Can I continue to manually gather up all the beetroot here? Yes, of course I can. Would I rather have a farm automatically get these when I'm working on other things? Yes, I would. The only problem now is the base is getting a little full, a little crowded. So we need to come up with a place to start building this new farm. Oh, I hadn't thought about this. This is interesting with the new uh, tower here that kind of takes up the whole view. We can no longer stand up here on the mob grinder and see the whole base. Well, maybe this is better though. Let's look, look over here. Yeah, so just a closer view, but it still works. Anyway though, I see a couple options. One, there is an area behind the villager houses that would probably work. I could clear that out a little bit and build a farm. That option will take a little bit of terraforming, but that has never scared us in the past. Option two, there's a lot of space right here off the side of my existing farms and by the dock where I could build it actually over the water. I don't necessarily want to mess with this island because that could be a turtle enclosure at some point. So without messing with that, I could put it over the, the ocean here. And finally, I could continue to terraform back in this area behind the iron farm 
and clear this all out, build it back there. While I'm thinking about that, I did just see we have a visitor while I was talking, so let's go say hi to him. It's like you're just begging to take a bath in lava. You're standing right next to it. Wait, no way. Are you are you looking at my llamas? Those are my llamas. He's, he's looking right at him. He's like, hmm, I'm thinking I might take these. You didn't even come over here with anything useful. Yeah, you know what? You're not getting a pass on this one. That is just too presumptuous. Yep, turn your back. You don't want to watch. I'm sorry you had to see that. I would never do that to any of you. You're all safe. Don't worry. I like the two options over here, either terraforming that and building it back in this area or over the, the water here. It's just when I trade with the farmer who's right in this hut here, I could have a farm right back in this area. In fact, I could probably automate the process of collecting beetroot over here and then having it transport directly into a chest next to the farmer. Ooh, that would be pretty cool. So I think we do that. Let's start preparing the area over there for a farm. Scoopy Doo finally gets his wish. Ruh row. The hunger must be sated. So I just had this happen to me for the first time since I started recording. I apparently forgot to hit record for when I started this day. And as that guy proves, when I came out of the house, yeah, it's still happening. Chickens were just escaping everywhere. Somehow they're getting out. When I came out, there were probably 30 or 40 chickens out here and I just I kind of slaughtered them all, but I don't know what's happening. I don't know how they keep getting out. Is it just because there's too many of them? Yeah, I mentioned it earlier, but avert your eyes, the faint of heart. Somehow chickens are escaping and it's causing the great chicken culling of 2023. Maybe did it have to do with how I built all the, the hoppers underneath this area? Is that somehow spawning them out here? I'm not sure what's going on. Where do they keep coming from? I have to watch this happen. Oh yeah, they're just getting pushed out of the fence. Okay, there's too many of you, apparently. If that's the problem, some of you need to go. Maybe that will help? I don't know. But now we have to go do cleanup again. This has really derailed my plans for the day. I feel like I'm going to be finding these things under the rugs for a while in the couch cushions. Oh man, what a pain. Hiya! Well, that was a productive day. I think we're going to be good on cooked chicken for a while at least. Okay, I actually started recording today. Work on beetroot farm take two. I did clear out the area at least, so we have some working space here. What I don't know is how much space I'm going to need, so I may need to get rid of more of this. I should figure that out before I start. And I did do some collecting to get ready for this farm. I think this is about all I'll need, but we'll find out once we, you know, start building it. Let's start with a platform down at the bottom just to see how big this will be. I did find a tutorial that I wanted to try because it's a type of farm that I've never given a shot before. It's... I'll probably make a couple changes to it, but I at least want to follow it for a bit because I like the way that I think this will work. And as usual, I will put links to any of the farms that I build in the videos in the description, just in case you want to give it a shot yourself. I'm really not looking for an assistant right now and you're kind of just getting in the way. Whenever I work with redstone, I kind of have no idea what I'm doing. I just assume that the, uh, the person running the tutorial does know what they're doing. Also, as a side note, I am still building along with the tutorial for the drop-off system. This will be a minecart path essentially and currently it's leading into a chest. That's just to make sure this whole thing works. Once it does work I really would like to try to make some kind of pathway that leads. Can you excuse me can you move thank you. A pathway that leads from here back or down the back of these uh, villager huts and gets dropped off over by my farmer. That way we don't have to run around here every time to collect them. What I'm doing now is essentially just making a bit of a zigzag path for a hopper minecart so that it can ride back and forth all throughout this area because the beet roots are gonna be above where we are now. So that way it can just go all the way around and collect what it needs or more to the point what I need. I think that looks right. When you saw those levers earlier, those are beneath here so that's why all of these are powered because they have a lever that is beneath all of this platform powering the powered rails that is actually something i forgot though was the hopper mine cart so let's go make one of those really quick okay the moment of truth we should be able to place this here and then it should run all the way down to the end and back let's give it a go it's like watching tennis one way and the other way and yes it turned around and that is what we want all right, so we're good to go here. And now it's just for the area where we will be planting all of the beetroot. This is all done, so we just need to put... That is not at all what I wanted. No. Uh-oh. 
Aw, oh, man. I was afraid of that happening. Anyway, need to put some stairs here, fill it with water, and then we should be good to saturate this whole area. And on top of that comes the composter. Then we'll put some glass there and a light source on top. I did also bring trapdoors because apparently these are going to be important for this farm. And I think we just essentially need to create some distance between the composter and wherever the villager is going to be able to reach. And yeah, I don't think I've mentioned that yet. There's going to be a villager in here. You know how much I like free labor. And then from there, we're just going to make a wall around the whole thing. All right, we are nearly there. I just made sure the whole thing was lit up so we don't have anything spawning around here. And also there's enough light for all of the crops to grow. But when I was packing for this, I was thinking I just needed enough beetroot seeds to plant, but I am going to need some for the villager inventory as well. And I'll explain a little bit about that. But first, let's head over and get pretty much all the beetroot seeds that we can. While I'm doing that, I was ruminating a bit, so if you'd care to share in the thoughts, I can tell you a bit about that. I love the absolute crazy breadth of skills and feelings that Minecraft gives you. And maybe you felt this way too, or maybe you didn't think of it exactly this way. Thinking back at recording this video, I mean, Right now we're building a farm and you have to have logical thinking and problem solving, critical thinking, planning ahead, patience. At other times, like when we were in the nether, it's a little bit more mindless where you're just running around hunting a specific mob to do certain drops. But with no notice, you're plummeting into the lava <laughs> when you don't expect to because something hit you and your heart is racing and you're just going absolutely crazy trying to think about how you're going to get yourself out of that situation. It's things like that, depending on what you're working on, how you can just completely change the way your brain is working, what you're thinking about, the feelings you're having. It's just one of the many reasons I love this game. Really curious to hear your thoughts on that. Let, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. If you have any thoughts or basically how you feel about Minecraft, what you're, uh, what you appreciate about the game or even watching other people play it. I know I've got plenty of satisfaction out of that in the past. Thanks for sticking with me there through all of my rambling. All right, so I've got a decent amount of beetroot seed. I still don't think I have quite enough, but we're going to try anyway. And what I'm doing now is thinking about order of operation. Do I want to plant all of this and then work on getting a villager in there? And I think I do actually. It would be nice to give all of this a chance to grow before I put the villager in there and I should have brought bone meal. Could have just red bowled all the, the beetroot into growing. And hey, first chance to use my hoe Cleopatra in her debut event. Performs like a dream. All right, let's get this all planted. I really hope this works. It's gonna be so nice to have this in an unlimited capacity and we're not gonna to have to just go manually grab it all anytime we get low on emeralds. That is not something I'm okay with. I needs my cash. Okay, and I think we'll remove a part of the wall because I don't wanna bring a villager in over the top because then they're just gonna land on something and destroy the, the plant that's beneath it. Because you know, villagers destroy everything. Oh, are you appreciating my work? Once again, trying to fathom something that is way beyond your pea brain. You have no idea how bad I wish I had a bucket of lava right now. That was mean. That was unwarranted. I am going to grab all the composters that I have, and that's because I have a dastardly plan to help me get a villager over here. I don't think there are job blocks anywhere else in the area that's going to tempt a villager to you know, kind of bring them off track when I'm trying to get them to go this way. But you never know, they're always going to find a way to disappoint you. And it's a simple plan. I've got the composter there. I'm just going to really just leave a trail of breadcrumbs. Composter-shaped breadcrumbs. So if they make it to this one, then go to that one, then they're going to want to go up into that one. You get the idea. But they are not smart at all, so we have to make it as easy as possible. And it looks like they're sleeping, so I should be okay to go in here and leave these open. Greetings, citizens. I need a volunteer. Oh, you're all sleeping? The sun just went down. The night is young. And since I only see one without a job... I'm sure you enjoy living off the government, but I just... I've got something I need you to do. It's really easy. It's not going to be bad at all. Come on over this way. You can't have that bed. Look, there's a nice tasty job block. You're going to make me push you all the way. Do they not take job blocks if they're sleepy? Well, in that case, I have something else that might tantalize you. Look at that. I thought so. I thought that would get your attention. Oh, now it's outside. Where are you going? You can't sleep in that. There's already somebody there. Okay, that's better. 
Oh, now you're outside. So what are you going to do if I break your bed now? There's still job blocks. I set this all up just for you. Oh, I hate you. You're going to make me use one bed instead of all these job blocks. Okay. What about this one? See, you just took it. I saw the hat on. I know you were a farmer. Come get this one. So if the bed is down, that's when you'll take a job block. That makes perfect sense. I'm glad you're going to be trapped for eternity in there. But how am I going to get you up there? Because I can't place the bed anywhere. Go on. Go on. What if I put the bed right there? Are you going to be able to get into that? No, you're not. What if I did this? Get out of the way. There we go. Ooh, look at that. Nice tasty bed. Okay, now don't fall when I do this. Get in there. Yes, 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 yes. Aha, sucker. My devious plan worked. And it absolutely went off without a hitch. I didn't need any of those job blocks anyway. I was planning on using the bed all along. So... Oh, hello. I don't really need you for this one. I know we needed you for the iron farm, but this is not a requirement. No free hugs. Anyway, kind of want a way to look up here because I think it's difficult to see what's going on. I don't think. I know it's difficult to see what's going on up there. So now we can say hi and everything. So I can come up here, see how you're doing. Ooh, and I actually forgot a part of this. I need to try to fill your inventory as much as possible with beetroot seeds. And that is the purpose of all of these. Hopefully you'll pick them up. And there we go. Good. So we're trying to fill his inventory with beetroot seeds. And that way, as he's harvesting the beetroot and just continues to fill his inventory with seeds, he'll replant what he harvests. And then the beetroots themselves, he will throw or try to throw them into the, uh, the composter. But he can't get there because of the trap doors. They should then fall on the ground. And... If his inventory is full, which it should be eventually, he won't be able to pick up the beetroot itself, so it'll just stay on the ground. The hopper minecart beneath will pick it all up, and it will put it into the chest. Hopefully that all works. And I understand that you won't take a job unless you have a bed, so we're going to go and wait until morning. Well, I'm going to sleep. I have a bed. But we will wait for morning. Thank you, Iron Golem. Appreciate it. And then make sure that he takes the job and starts doing the good work. Oh, I have to put this bed back. I just thought these guys are going to wake up in the morning and be like, where's Frank? He was here. He fell asleep in the last night and now he's gone. What happened to him? Don't you worry. He's being put to good use. You know what I just realized? Yesterday was day 365. We have been in this hardcore world for exactly one Minecraft year. Congratulations, me. Okay, all of you too. Congratulations. Hey, you took the job. I knew you would. It's not like you can go anywhere anyway. I'm really hoping that he didn't have any other produce in his inventory because if he did, he'll potentially harvest the beetroot and then plant something different like a potato or carrot. And I'm hoping that's not the case. But right now I'm really just looking for confirmation. Why are there beetroot seeds in here? Anyway, looking for confirmation that it works. So basically, as soon as we start seeing beetroot in here, and once I do have that, I need to find a way to uh, get this over to the, the chest on the other side. All right, beautiful. Look at those clouds. Does not happen that quickly in real life. Wonderful. But may as well dig a channel for that today. And I probably won't record a whole lot because nobody wants to see rainy footage and this iron golem lumbering over me and that type of thing so really the only thing i'm going to do today is make sure this works and start digging a channel for the potential item mover that will uh bring the beetroot from here over to my chest by the farmer villager for trades so i'll check back in with you when the weather is better still raining and still no beetroot but i want to do a test so for example if i had the beetroot feed into a dispenser so it landed in here. Can I shoot it out into a water pathway? I'm realizing I have no idea how dispensers work. Maybe a lever? Let's try this. Okay. So we'd need a repeater to continue to shoot them out. It does work. So something like that to shoot them out into a water pathway that leads into a hopper over by here. I think that should work for us. So I see him harvesting a bit, and yeah, you probably just saw it right there. He's still picking up the beetroot, which means I didn't fill his inventory entirely, I think. And we're actually getting seeds in here. So it's 
partially working. I might just need to wait for his inventory to fill up the right amount, and I keep throwing him seeds to try to do that, because I need him to not pick up the beetroot or to try to throw it into the composter. And that's not happening currently. So this might be a bit of a waiting game. At least the minecart works. It's dropping off the seeds. Sure you don't want these? Wouldn't you rather have these than the beetroot in your inventory? Aw oh man, I think my minecart just picked those right back up. So at least the farm is complete. We just need it to kind of prove out and make sure that it's working. And that's... I've just got to wait it out. I have to see if this guy is actually going to let any beetroot go into the hopper minecart down at the bottom. So we'll wait that one out. Maybe move on to one or two more things and come back check it out as soon as that starts working then we'll go to the next step which is the transportation system over to my farmer villager for trades well we have a bit of time while we wait for that farm to start working so i did have a thought why don't we break out the name tags and start naming a few more things around the base i got three for now i saw a couple comments that i thought would be uh fitting for the base might end up doing more before the end of this video but for the time being i'm gonna go with three and the first name tag is going to go to one of our pandas. I'm sure you're very excited, Lunchbox, because you're going to have somebody else in here that's named just like you. I'm also 99% sure that you are stuck behind that bamboo because I don't think you've moved from that spot for the past 100 days. But anyway, I think we're going to pick... Yeah, we're going to pick you, big fella. This is a comment that came in from Pixie, and that was to name one of the pandas Jack Black. I loved that comment because it was in reference to the fact that Jack Black voiced Poe in Kung Fu Panda, but we're actually naming the panda Jack Black and not Poe, which I thought was pretty awesome. Also, I've been a Jack Black fan for years and years, back to the Tenacious D days, so very good name for the panda. You are now Jack Black. Welcome to Rome. The other two name tags are going to be for another pair of llamas. All right, there's Brutus. You've already got a name. Brutus, where is Caesar? Oh, good. Okay, you're still here. Ooh, I was worried there for a minute. And I want to name a couple of you, but something is going on here. Why are you all wanting to be in exactly the same spot? Break it up, break it up. All right, so for these two names, thank you for the recommendation, Chris. The two llamas here are going to be named... You can never see it with llamas. That's Joseph right there. And over here we have Jessica. So two new llamas, Joseph and... Jessica, once again, thanks for the recommendation on that, Chris. Glad you're enjoying the videos. Oh, forgot to say it. Welcome to Rome, Joseph and Jessica. Ooh, I just came to check on the farm. I'm getting some beetroot in here. So that is good news. Now, all that's left is just to wait it out. I want this thing to fill up, and then we should have an unlimited supply of beetroot for trades with the villagers. I'm glad you finally decided to give me a few of the beetroot. For your sake, obviously. I'm glad you started working right. Oh, day 369. I'm watching you, citizen. No jokes. Before I forget, something did just come to mind. Last time we fought the Wither, I had a missed opportunity. And now that we've got all the chickens, we can make up for that. And I have no shortage of eggs. Thinking a full inventory should do it, but we could always come back. Essentially, I fought the Wither without, uh, without trying to get any Wither Roses, which, to my understanding, are dropped anytime the Wither kills a mob. So what I've seen most other people do is just spawn in a bunch of chickens right where you plan to spawn in the wither and then inevitably the wither takes them out because chickens are like you know level negative one at best and the the wither is a level 20 i don't know so if we were to head down to where we previously fought the wither and then just find a little area where we can uh where we can spawn in a bunch of the chickens with the the eggs which way i think it was this way then when we fight this next wither this video it'll just boom take them all out right away and give us a ton of wither roses no plans for those right now but i know they can be used for a few different farms so i'd rather just have them now and keep them available in case we do need them this room worked out pretty well last time the only thing obviously adding the chickens i'll try to find a place in the ground for them but we might want to lower the ceiling a little bit that i think gave us some trouble last time okay so this should work right here because it's two down they shouldn't be able to get out actually we could 
Why not do a couple of these? Let's let's fill this one in and just see how we do. Of course, there's going to be like... Oh, okay. I was going to say none are going to spawn in, but that's at least three. Nope, get in there. Get in there. Okay. I'm really hoping they're not going to be able to get out of here. I don't see why they would, but they also escaped my farm, and I wasn't thinking they'd be able to do that either. Get in there. Get in there. There we go. It's starting to be quite the merry gathering down there. I'm not counting, but I'm already thinking this is going to be enough chickens to get however many wither roses we might need at least for the near future just in case too let's give them a little bit more room i just opened one up i think i can open that up yeah there we go so now i don't know exactly what it would take but i don't want them to start perishing from entity cramming deaths and i'm just kind of assuming the wither's gonna destroy the floor so it should be able to get under here to damage all of these and there we go actually there's no reason to keep these so we can open it up look at all of them in there and then if we spawn the wither right on top of this i think that's gonna mean a bad day for all of you folks but a good day for me and my inventory okay now let's just grab a little bit of this oh look at that do you wish you had the luck of legion v whoa didn't mean to do that look at that look into my eyes anyway yeah feeling very lucky. Diamonds don't really mean as much to me anymore, but it's still exciting to find them. They just keep on going. Look at that. And they keep, keep on going. They keep, 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 keep on going. I don't know if I've ever seen them spread out like this. That's a bit weird, but kind of cool. So what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven in a configuration that, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen before. Still going to take them though. It don't matter. None of this matters. 16 out of seven. I like it. Start filling this in. Oh no, I fell in with the chickens. Can I rocket myself out of here without taking, well, I'll take damage, but without popping a totem? Okay, that was dangerous, but I figured it out. Don't fall in there. Okay, so that's mostly set. We should be good for our next wither fight. Just saw another cat out here. Hey, puss puss. Hey, gotcha. Look at you. Hopefully you'll follow me back to our home. Maybe not. All right, where'd you go? Yep, got yourself stuck in there. Wonderful. You do not want to be stuck with him for eternity, believe me. How about now? Can you get out? No, 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 no. You stay in here. Cat, go out. Villager, stay in. No! Get... Hey. Look, I took your job block. Okay, you can have that back. I need to get you out, though. This is too close quarters for me. Okay, at some point you gotta teleport. You should be able to get out of there, right? Come on, I'm going this way. There we go, that worked, okay. Come on in, and you, nope, nope, stay in here, stay in here. We're going this way, and boom, there we go. And I already know what I'm naming you. You are now named Machiavelli, because everybody knows that cats are political opportunists. Yes, Garfield, that goes for you too. You never got a name though. So I've got Garfield the cat, Machiavelli. You need a name? Let me know, citizens. Leave me a comment. Let me know what we should name the uh, yellow eye, blue eye cat. So for now, I'm too intimidated by the prospect of trying to make the transportation system from here over to the, the farmer villager down the little tunnel I made. But I think I know how I kind of want to do it so we can prep for it a little bit. I'm not going to finish it, but there is one thing we can do. And that, quite simply, is going to be replacing all of these dirt blocks with packed ice. I don't know why I'm using my hands to do that. But the packed ice, unlike regular ice, shouldn't melt when it's near light sources like this. So it should stay here. And essentially, if we get the dispenser figured out over there and maybe a water source at the end that should push the items, I'm hoping it'll then slide along the ice and then land in a hopper here at the end. So at least now we can get the ice in. And yes, can confirm it is slippery, but there we go. Comes here, goes bloop, drops into a hopper, and then we can have a chest down at the bottom. So not a whole lot done for that, but it was something I was thinking about just now and I didn't want to forget. As you can see from my inventory, I would like to go and fight the wither again, mainly because I want to rebuild my beacon. But before we do that, we need a new spot for it because the existing spot or the spot we used to have it in is now occupied. It's not going to fit in here anymore. And honestly, it wasn't the best spot anyway because it didn't reach a lot of the parts of the base when I was running around. Over here makes more sense sense but it also doesn't fit really anywhere at least on the surface level so that makes me think on top of the dome or underground somewhere so where in fact is the center of my base 
Um, maybe right about here? I think this spot right here is just about the center. Yeah, because left to right, that's about the center. It's not as wide or as tall, whatever you want to say, but I think that's pretty close. Wild idea, but what if we just had maybe four emerald blocks on top or above the ground and the rest of the beacon pyramid was underground? It won't look as grand, but it's still going to work and it does save space. Might not be a bad idea. I guess we have to fight the wither first anyway, so maybe we just do that, come back, and then worry about the... Uh the beacon location. Ooh, look at all that honey. It's time for our second wither fight, which of course is with the wither's twin, uh, Bither. I did bring more chicken eggs. I figured we could top up on the chicken hole down here and capitalize on this event. Greetings, chicken citizens. I have new potential allies for you. Get back in. Okay, thank you. Yep, run back in there. Run back in. No, no. There we go. I'd be lying if I said I'm not gonna get some kind of satisfaction out of seeing all of these chickens just blown to smithereens and turned into wither roses. Let's be honest, they kind of have it come Coming. So just to make sure that happens, we're going to spawn the bither basically right on top of these guys. And just like last time, we are taking precautions. Firstly, I just remembered to put on the mood plate. I had the uh, bird feathers plus wax on, so that's safe. Extra totem of undying, potion of healing, potion of strength, my typical golden carrots, and then also a ton of golden apples. If you want to see the first wither fight, feel free to head back, watch the 300 day movie. That's when I first fought the wither. And I did didn't do too bad, so I'm not too worried about this fight. I think we should be all right. That being said, I'm still a little nervous. I always am, but it wouldn't be very Roman of me if I didn't take on this challenge. So here we go. Boop. Hello. Goodbye. We basically just hide until he's ready to boom, boom the chickens. That's it. Oh, look at all of them. Oh yeah. He's just taking out the chickens. Oh, and he's coming for me. Hello. Go for the chickens, not me. Ooh, there we go. I still see one over there. Keep going for him. Thank you. Thank you. Let's lead them to the chickens. Come on. Come get the chickens. They're over here. Come on. Come get them. <laughs> come on. The chickens are right over here. Are you stuck? What's going on over there, buddy? Yeah, he's just sitting there. That's weird. I will take all these wither roses and feathers, however. Should be a little bit more urgent fighting the, the wither, but I don't know. Lost the intimidation factor. Okay, maybe not. Time to get serious. I think you've taken out all the chickens and now you're going for me. Where'd you go? There you are. Whoa. All right, got the shield on. That's our cue. Golden apple, potion of strength, razzle dazzle. Look at that damage. Yeah. Same as last time. Didn't stand a chance. That's what you get when you take on the Imperator. You can't scare us. We got over a stack of wither roses and another nether star. That is what I'm talking about, BB. Also, same as last time, we're going to fill this room back in because I like fighting the wither here. It's really not too bad. So we're going to get it prepped for next time whenever we're able to finally get three more wither skulls. And that way, this will be all ready for another go. Time to take the spoils back home. All right, let's sort through everything in the inventory. Didn't actually use the potion of healing, so we're good to use that next time. Everything else just goes back into its respective chests. I don't know what I'm going to do with all this chicken, cooked and raw. Ever since I hit senatorial rank, I refuse to eat anything that isn't gold. Wither roses we can keep in here, and we can make a new beacon by placing three obsidian, five glass, and the nether star. Look at that. So now we have two, but I am going to need more of these blocks. And in fact, I have more, many more iron, but I'd also like to use emeralds. So maybe before we build those two, I work so hard to get this many stacks of emeralds though. Let's, uh, okay, tell you what, let's finish up working on the beetroot farm so that it transfers the beetroots over to me where I want to trade. And every day we'll keep trading, get a ton of emeralds. That way when we build the new beacon pyramid, we can use a ton of emerald in it along with the iron blocks and we should be in good shape. Speaking of, let's see how our prisoner or uh, farmer is doing over here at the beetroot farm. I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but I'm also not an enormous fan of the fact that the these used to be one stick for one emerald trades and ever so slowly they've gone up to two and then three and then four and I can't get them to go back down. It's not like I haven't noticed. I'm on to you. Anyway, let's check on the farmer. 
Oh, interesting. So you just needed a friend or no? He hopped up here. I see what happened. Hopefully you replant that because I don't want to lose a spot and you might need to go. You might be messing stuff up in here. So short life expectancy for a big ding guy that jumps into my farm. Anyway. Okay. Not looking too bad, actually. Tons of, uh, tons of seeds. Let's fill these in. So... There we go. Should only place beetroot here now. Where we left off was finding a way to replace this chest, or if not replace, at least put something beneath it that dispenses items onto this ice and what will be a water pathway so that it can end up over on that side. All right, I've got a ton of random junk. I don't need the emeralds. I should put those away. But anyway, re the random junk. I think this is maybe what I'll need to transport all that stuff over where I need it, but let's find out. I do know what it'll look like on this side, and that will be a hopper that these can land on, some stone to block them from going any further, and a chest to collect it beneath. In fact, I don't think I need these two. There we go, pretty elegant. And since I'll probably get seeds as well, we may as well put an auto composter over here. For that, I need a composter. Imagine that chest with a hopper composter on top hopper into composter and chest on top there we go okay i'm just staring at this and thinking about how i want to do it and i think we'll need some space under here what if it was a dispenser facing this way a hopper from the chest into the dispenser and that is working but now we need to turn this into sort of an auto dispenser but first we should prep the call it the waterway it should be able to put a sign right here we may as well make it a nice sign good luck items and the reason i'm doing that is because i want to place water but i don't want it to flow backwards into the the dropper so if we place some here should only go in one direction which is that way which is what we want and then let's carry on with that a couple more signs i think this will help if we keep a sign that's like hey keep going i'm sure that'll help with the uh the movement so we'll have the the water and the ice all the way down whoops i put that sign too high there we go should keep it moving next sign almost there and the last one now we're just gonna strike their hearts with fear no they'll be all right and this one should bring it hopefully right into the hopper that's all in theory obviously i have no idea if this will work i had to look this part up because i have no idea what i'm doing essentially i just want to make sure that whatever fills in here it's always just shooting them into this water stream and apparently you can do that by placing a comparator behind it followed by a repeater and then you place down some redstone and we're actually going to have to break into one of these little huts a little bit because I'm running out of space, but that's okay. And finally, a repeater facing in. Hey, look at that. Okay, it worked one time, and now it's not, so what is the problem? Let's try that again. If I were to place this down here... Yeah, I mean, one shoots out, but I kind of was hoping you'd do it a little bit more than that. Oh, there we go. Now it's working. Exciting. Let's go check. Are these making it all the way down to the other one that we set up? Look at that. That. they're coming all the way down to this end if we check here beautiful so i do worry a little bit because it only worked after i took the seeds out so i'm wondering if that'll break it when it puts seeds in next we might have to do some kind of sorting on that speaking of seeds this is why we made the composter but that is exciting it's actually working and we might want to cover some of this up because some of it isn't making it in there let's do that Okay, so now there's kind of nowhere else for it to go. It has to go down that channel. And I think we're back to the waiting game now. Let's just keep watching, make sure that it works. It doesn't get clogged up or anything like that. And then we can keep on with our trades. While we wait, let's do some trades and just make sure everything else is full in some of these chests, like the, uh, the pumpkins and the melons, the sticks, all that type of thing. Even though these guys are absolutely trying to rip me off now, four per emerald. It's almost like they need some more encouragement from their zombie buddies. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is ready to be cleared out for sure. And there we go. Beautiful. You know you have enough when by the time you get to one end and finish, they're already growing back. I've really only been trading with the farmer and the stick boys. And one day of full trades is basically getting me a little over three stacks of emeralds. I could do more because I could trade with all the librarians. I could trade with some of the, the goobers in that house. But I think that's probably enough. Yeah, I think there's time. I don't think we necessarily need much more than that. Do you need to be there i'd like to be able to get to that chest 
Excuse me. Excuse me. Jeez. I want to see if I can confirm that this thing is still working. Oh yeah, there we go. This is really cool. I don't think I've ever done an item transportation system like this before, but I'm very glad that it's working. Oh, there are so many possibilities for that in the future. Okay, quick hypothetical. What if we were to dig out an area here for a two by two beacon? So four total. What would that look like? It needs to be four high, right? Kind of weird trying to build an inverse inverted beacon pyramid but I think I'm figuring it out. After this, the question is gonna be, do we want the whole thing buried underground or would we rather clear out this stuff as well and put glass on top so you can see it? I guess first let's fill it in, see if we have enough blocks. There's one layer down. Same as last time, we'll try to alternate between emerald and iron, but this time we may actually run out of emerald. Yeah, so I think we will fill the center of this one with iron. And finally, the last layer is emerald because we are rich okay actually not too bad and then if we put let's say one here one here why are you not where there we go and just for fun we'll mix it up with one red one yellow i was trying to think like my uh my Roman garb, red and yellow i suppose i could also do red and silver so kind of just a little weird bit of modern art right in the middle of the the base but it should reach us in more places now speaking of we need to activate these and last time you were speed and speed two so we'll do that once again and what do we want for the second one kind of like last time i'm not too worried about resistance or strength because we're safe at the base and i don't mine a whole lot here so i'm thinking jump boost would be pretty cool Okay, once again, we are Sonic fast, and look at that. <laughs> oh man, I just landed on some carrots. No problem. Something about this just looks really funny to me. Oh, there we go. So it still doesn't reach everywhere, but I do think it's going to be more than last time. Very, very cool. Oh boy, I just remembered something that I wanted to work on in this video and I'm not looking forward to it. I want to try to break the nether roof so we can go and fix the gold farm that we made in the nether in the last video. So we should get some materials together for that. One of them is TNT and I just noticed very low on gunpowder. That's making me a little bit uncomfortable. We have plenty of fireworks, but yeah, I don't want to get too low on this. So why don't we go grab some at the creeper farm really quick. I think I mentioned a couple times, but the creeper farm is my favorite, so we can take a look at that and appreciate it a little bit. There they are. You having fun out here? Their skin's gonna be so wrinkly by the time they get out. There's the farm. All we need to do is go up to the top and AFK for a little bit, then we can collect some of that gunpowder. This is always the most interesting part of my day, just sitting up here waiting for the creepers to expire and donate some gunpowder to me. Right, the sun is setting or about fully set so i guess it's time to go down take a look see what we got from this afk i always want to fly right onto the platform but i can never remember which side it actually comes out on ah there it is yep i think it's still working not bad not bad okay so a little over three stacks let's wait a little bit longer maybe i can get three and a half. Oh, we have a visitor did you come with an offering to my creeper shrine no offering okay I think that's good for now. Let's head back home. I just thought too, I don't think we've seen the lighthouse, the nether lighthouse, since we built it from a distance. So there we go. Look at that. Nice indicator that we're getting close to the base. Looks pretty cool from a distance too. Ooh, look at that. Right into the house. Since I do plan to go to the nether roof and I do not want to get stuck up there, I'm going to over prepare and just bring a ton of different materials. I'm not sure that I'll need all of this, but according to the tutorial I'm looking at, I'll need at least two pistons, a little bit of TNT, one block of obsidian, and a trapdoor. But I don't know if I'm going to end up just blowing it all up and needing more TNT. So I'm bringing extra, but also extra obsidian and flint and steel because I know if I were to get stuck up there, and that's entirely possible. I could just make another nether portal and use that as an escape route, essentially. I do also need ender pearls. This is bugging me. This chest isn't labeled with nether pearls. We should do that real quick. And there we go. Easy enough. Why do I feel like I'm forgetting something? Well, at the very least, we'll have our obsidian for our escape route, so it shouldn't be too bad. I almost forgot I need some stuff to actually build an AFK platform up there as well. Okay, now I think I'm ready. 
Positive thoughts, positive thoughts. We're gonna get up to the nether roof. I'm not gonna be stuck up there for eternity. It's gonna work out, gonna be able to get back. Yeah, and this is really nice anyway. In the last video you might have seen, we were in the appropriate biome already from the nether portal. So all we have to do is go straight up from the portal and we can get to the gold farm. Oh man, it's still incredibly loud though. Those minecarts just grinding on each other. And then right over here was where we found the roof. And I believe that is the spot where there's only one block before you get to the nether roof. I am looking around a little bit because I want to make sure I don't find anything that looks like it's higher than that because I do not want to break through multiple layers. No, that's really all I'm seeing, so let's fill this back in and then get started. Oh, I'm so nervous about this. I'm sure it's comparatively simple, but I'm going to screw it up somehow. Also never tried this. Apparently you can use another pearl to get up here, so if we just, uh, I don't know, throw one. Whoa, okay. That's not great. I just got stuck somewhere and took damage. Let's try that again. Whoa, okay, looks like it worked. And I did check coordinates, so this is the block that we're trying to break, that's the one we just came from, and apparently the first step is to put a piston down here. Next up, we need a piece of obsidian with TNT on top. It would help if I put the TNT in the right spot though, right there. Then comes our trap door with a lever over here. This part is interesting because apparently you have to change the key bindings for use item place block. I I'm not sure that I fully understand why, but I don't want to mess this up, so I'm just going to do what the tutorial tells me to do. So I just want to remember that's the right button, but for now I'm going to change that to R. And this is where the fun happens, because you are kind of have to do a lot of things all at once. From what I understand, you have to go under the trapdoor, hit the lever, and then before the TNT goes off, you have to get in place to try to put down another piston as it explodes, which apparently removes the bedrock. I have no idea how the first person that did this figured all of this stuff out, but it all seems pretty crazy to me, and I'm just going to see if I can do it without screwing it up. Let's do a practice round. Since I changed this, I'm not using my mouse anymore. I'm using a key, so we have to get under the trapdoor. Not going to do it yet, but apparently you hit the lever, get back under the trapdoor, and then get ready to place a piston right up here as the TNT explodes. So yeah, a lot going on. I'm not very confident, but let's give this a try. I'm actually going to put back on the move plate just in case. Okay, here we go. Uh, okay, so I think if it ends up being down, that says it's not going to work. Correct, it did not work. So we will try again. This is why I brought extra stuff. And here we go, attempt number two. That time it didn't even place, so I did something wrong. You just have to keep going and keep trying more. That's kind of frustrating. Really hoping it works before I run out of TNT. No, oh, no. Screwed that one up. Ooh, it's facing up this time. Is it going to work? Big money, big money. Ooh, look at that. We got the right distance too. It actually leads down there. That's incredible. So hey, not too many tries and it actually worked and we're not going to be stuck up here for eternity. So that's all good news. That is a first for Legion V. I have never tried this before. Very happy that it worked out though. Now I just need to grab the coordinates for the center of the mob farm and then we can build an AFK platform from there. And that should be right here. And I can tell I'm right because I can hear those minecarts again, just deafening me. I was wondering why it wasn't working and I forgot. Didn't change this back yet. There we go. So apparently we just build this all the way up, get a platform up there and fingers crossed that'll fix our problem. If you didn't watch the last video, I could not get that gold farm to work and I think it's because there were too many spawns happening in the area around it. So that's why we're building the AFK platform and why it'll hopefully fix that problem. There was barely anything in those chests uh, from the zombified piglins. So we're gonna probably do a test right now, see if it starts working. And when we go back down and there is anything in the chests, we know it worked. I do wanna build this out a little bit so that we can fly up here with the elytra instead of having to climb every time because that took quite a while. That should be good. Oh, that's a bit disconcerting. There's not really anything around us. We're just in a little platform in the void. But anyway, let's spend some time up here AFKing. I'll, uh, you know, give it 10 or 20 minutes and then we'll head back down, see if this fixed our problem.
All right, everyone, cross your fingers. Gonna head down and see if this thing worked. I forgot I didn't have my elytra on. Wow, that was close. <laughs> I remembered after I jumped, which is not great. Okay, somebody in here, not really what I needed, but that's something. Okay, that is definitely more than we had before. Look at that, I can hear him in the, the minecarts as well. Okay, it's finally working. This is bugging me though, let's see if we can clean it up a little bit. I'm just collecting all of the extra gold nuggies and then keeping a bunch in here to fill the, the slots, but I'm trying to organize it, make it look a little bit better. So there you go, didn't manage it last time, but now we have a working gold farm. Let's bring all the gold nuggies home and see how much we got. Okay, over one stack at least, let's see. All right, a stack and 11 with three left over. That's really not bad, I wasn't up there that long. And you know what? Let's just be bougie with this. Gonna use the majority of that just to get more golden apples because I can. It's also not exactly like we were hurting for gold, but I feel a lot better knowing that we've got a unlimited supply, essentially. Why do I hear free leads when I'm inside my house? There you are. You just can't keep off of my property, can you? I mean, to me, doing this seems like a clear indication that you're not wanted. But maybe I'm too subtle, I don't know. What do you think, Llama? Too subtle? Before we call it a day, I just noticed one more thing that's bugging me. Just making some chain, because I think that'll fix my problem. Whenever I stand in this room to talk with all of you, it looks like it's a bit dark. I've been noticing that, and I'm not sure why. I've got plenty of windows and lanterns all over the place, but maybe it's because there's none near the center. So I thought, why not hang some lanterns? Oh man, the beacon screwing me up with these big jumps. What if we just did something like that all the way around? I also don't want Garfield to get scared of the dark, so this should help. Eh, that's maybe a little bit better, a little bit brighter. Maybe something in the center, too. Eh, that is probably too low. I'm going to hit my head on that. What about like that? Okay, kind of interesting. Something a little bit different. Definitely brighter, because now I'm standing directly beneath a light source. But that should do the trick. Not too shabby. All right, the gold farm is all sorted. I say we go check on the beetroot farm. Make sure that's still working all right. Actually, I forgot. We need to bring something. Good opportunity to get some lava from our dripstone farm here. Still think that's pretty cool that this has just been filling up that whole time. Thank you. And nothing's burning down, right? We're safe? Yeah, I hope we're safe. It is very nice being being able to just zip around the base quickly and jump. Oh, I thought I could clear the whole thing. Didn't bring the bucket of lava for any particular reason. Thought I'd just have it just in case. But, you know, hey, can you hold this for me for a second? It's not that I don't want you here. I just, I'm afraid you're going to mess up my, my rates in here. You're also making it incredibly difficult to do this because of where you are. Uh, and I screwed up. Wait, where's Cleopatra? Okay, so I messed up a little bit. Need to go get Cleopatra and I'll fix your farm. Don't you worry. I bet I can leap right out of here. Whee! Benefits to having a beacon. Oh, man, did I leave that shulker box somewhere? I have no idea where I put that. Okay, my hoe, Cleopatra. Cleopatra is in a shulker box somewhere, and I do not remember where that is. Did I leave it in the nether? This is driving me nuts. Where did I put that thing? Yeah, that must be it. I don't see it anywhere around here. I must have left it in the nether when we were working on the gold farm. So, quick excursion. Okay, not down here. Is it up there? Okay, this is a problem. I don't see it up there either. Not up here. Okay, I'm worried. What did I do with this shulker box? Yeah, and the elytra's on this time. You probably saw me do something with it in earlier footage, and I'm just like being an idiot and it's just sitting somewhere right in plain view. I guess it could be in a chest somewhere. This will be fun. Now we go through every chest and check for it. It's not in any of these either. What is going on? I swear I had a white shulker box. I would always keep that in my inventory and now it's not here. Oh, you know what? We were at the creeper farm. I think I remember setting it down. I don't remember why, but I think I remember leaving it there. You knew this whole time and you didn't tell me. Unbelievable. A trader and his llamas are out to get me. I could have swore it was here. Now it's not here. Okay, I'm scared. What if we lost Cleopatra already? Okay, I'm dumb. I went back and watched some of the footage and I had that thing right up until the day, which was like one day ago when I was putting up this chandelier or whatever you want to call it. I looked through all of these chests, right? But somehow I missed because... <laughs> I think the reason I put it in here is I thought it was a block of iron. It looked exactly the same to me at the time. So I had it. I just put it in with, uh, with all the iron. So crisis averted. Anyway, that really threw me off. What we were trying to do was get Cleopatra so I could use her to fix my mistake with the iron golem in the beetroot farm. There we go. Okay, wow. 
And what started all of that was I was gonna check in. How's it going? How are we doing over here? This all appears to still be working. I'm kind of getting mesmerized by this. Goes all the way down and comes all the way back. Whoa. And when it gets back, look at that. Still working. Let's clear out all you old boys and then use all the eggs to start fresh. I'd also like to call out that this guy has lived up there his entire life. When I would, you know, break eggs this way by throwing them up here and the chickens would fall, he landed there as a baby chicken and has not moved since. And, you know, I think we cleared out this area. That's fine. There's no reason to disturb him. It looks like he's happy enough up there just staring at the wall. So I say we leave him there and just move on to do other things. Bloop. And now we just refill the population, which is fairly simple when you have hundreds of eggs. And there you go. Population refilled. I really like with that jump boost, I can now jump right over the fences and I don't have to risk opening the fence gates or building up to get over it. It's just hop and I'm over. And you can't do that, suckers. No, we don't want another one of you. If you're not going to get down, go in the way of old yeller. All right, Machiavelli, I'm thinking today might be a chore day. What do you think? No, that's terrible advice. I'm not going to do that. He told me instead I should overthrow the petty dukes of Italy. I mean, we'll get to that definitely, just not today. So yep, we'll clear out all of the various farms that we have around the base, make sure that everything's all loaded up, go check on our bee friends, uh, probably harvest all the, the trees that we have growing over there and replant them. Just make sure that everything's in good shape. Speed harvesting. Let's actually start down on this side because I think these trees have the saplings that I'll need more of, so we'll make sure they have time for all those leaves to decay and drop saplings. By the way, I asked a question a couple videos ago, I think it was the 200 days video about that tree tree chopping mod tree something or other mod basically you can just chop the bottom and the whole thing explodes and i got a really good response with that so thank you for commenting and it was mainly positive so my plan is i think we just keep the hardcore world as is i'm not going to necessarily put anything in here for the next two videos but after we complete 500 days i'm thinking that's when i start the next series i might try out some mods i'm going to start putting some mods on the game and pay, you know maybe pick two or three to try out and that's going to be one of them so again thanks for the comments and you can look forward to that in the next series. This is why I stick to spruce. These are all such a pain to chop down. Okay, well that took just about all day, I think. Yeah, I mean, decent amount of goodies. Got plenty of jungle, dark oak, acacia, regular oak, and birch. Plus there's a lovely collection of leaves here to watch now. I might replant them slightly differently, just so they're not all bunched together here right in the beginning. I might just spread it out a little bit more. What is going on here? Are you all afraid of hoppers or something? They're terrified of the carpet and the hoppers. See, it's safe over here. You don't have to huddle up over there. Must be something with baby chickens. They just, I don't know, are afraid of carpets. We'll just drop off most of the goods here and then go replant everything. Like I said, I'm gonna I changed the configuration up a little bit, but I do like the way Dark Oak looks, so we're still going to have that be in the front row. I'll only do two, though. That way they hopefully don't grow together too much, and it looks a little bit nicer. And then for Acacia, I think I will do three. Let's do that next. Or no, wait a minute. Let's skip a row. I think I have plenty of space, so we'll do one in between and just leave those blank for now. Next, we'll do some Oak, followed by Birch. Oh, that worked out perfectly. So now we can do some, uh, we can switch to jungle saplings and do some monster trees and it'll still be one space between the other trees and one space between the spruce. Can it grow on this icky stuff? I hope it can. There we go. Everything's all planted and it's already starting to grow. Beautiful. Next up is our bee buddies. And as you can see, we've got our shears here and plenty of flowers to keep the population booming. I'm pretty sure all of these are full. Well, maybe not. Just saw one that wasn't. Okay, yeah, there's plenty that aren't full. Still, though, 48 honeycomb from one trip. But if they're not all full, you know what that means. More bees. Come to me, bees. I require adorable baby bees from you. Trying to do this all in one go so I can remember who got a flower and who didn't. Okay, you're kind of crowding me. I think we got a decent amount. And they're looking at the two flowers that I accidentally planted there. I'm waiting for them to move because I'm terrified to try to take them right now. Because I will definitely get stung by the bees for hitting them accidentally. And that's not something that I'm interested in. There we go. Where did you... How are you getting out again? I thought we resolved this. Oh... 
This is so annoying. How? How are they getting out? That's it. We're, we're just building a fence up all the way around that in there. Don't know why more would leave when they see what's happening to all of their brothers out here. You are so dumb. Co-mingling with my pigs in here, making it difficult to hit you. Okay, never mind. Other idea. Pew! Get out of the way. Oh, see? See what you did? How have I never picked up pork chop before? They are making me hit all the pigs. This is unacceptable. I know you're back there. Come out with your hands up. Well, that's what you get for protecting a criminal. They're over here too, making me take out the sheep, you little menace. All right, we just need a ton of fence or I don't even know, something. I think I got what I need. So let's build it up this high because they can't be trusted. All right, so top layer done. Now we just need a little bit of this. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, Legion, you're using iron bars? Isn't that going to make it look like a prison? Won't that make them uncomfortable and scared? Yeah, that's the point. These little deviants are a menace to society. They're a danger to themselves and others. They deserve this. They had it coming. So you can all just enjoy it in your new prison while I eat one of your cousins. And in case you're wondering about the refilling system, I already thought of that. I can chuck an egg right over the top. And if they were to hatch, they would still fall into the prison. So we are set. Do you remember in the previous 100 days when I made a fool of myself by trying to place, I'm pretty sure it was just azalea leaves here and bone meal it thinking that would grow into a tree? Well, I might be about to uh, make a fool of myself again. I forgot while we were out exploring, we got flowering azalea and flowering azalea leaves. And I think one of these actually does turn into a tree. So let's try the flowering azalea because I have a hunch that's the one. And where do we want this thing to go? I actually wouldn't mind replacing all of the oak trees with this if it does work. So let's try it with this one. First, we have to get... Oh, they're are they following? Yeah, sorry. That's flowers on it. Sorry, didn't mean to attract you. I was about to say I didn't want to hit any of them, but they were crowding around me. There we go. All cleared out. I did bring some bone meal. I'm going to need you all to go somewhere else, though. Come on. If I'm right, I should be able to put this here, hit it with some bone meal, and hey, I was right. Look at that. So honestly, it looks very similar to an oak tree, but it has flowers in it. Ooh. But honestly, I do like that better. I think it looks nicer. The leaves, though, kind of spawned in in a weird configuration. Might be a bit of a dryad here and just change it around a bit. Yeah, they like combined with the dark oak one. That's strange. Did not know it could do that, but kind of interesting. Anyway, let's keep it going. Let's replace some of these other ones. There we go. Now for number two. Okay, the other one took one bone meal. I'm guessing it doesn't always work that way. Come on. There we go. These definitely spawn in with strange configurations of the leaves. Look at that. It's all off to the side, kind of lopsided over to one end. I guess that's good, though. You don't want it looking too uniform, but I don't like how I can see the very top uh, branch. So let's just cover that up. There we go. And let's do one more right over here. Hopefully, 21 bone meal is enough to do the trick. Beautiful. Yeah, you know, I've got to comment on it one more time. Very strange how these spawn in. They're all lopsided. I'm I'm not complaining. I think it's cool. I like that it is a little bit different. I just didn't know it did that. It's strange. Very strange. But I did bring extra, so why don't we just go around placing a few of these to make the place look a little bit nicer, a little bit more diverse. Oh, B, did you see that? He made it like despawn right as I placed it. I am so popular with them right now. The other thing that I thought would be awesome is if I could place these spore blossoms up top somewhere because then you would have the little particle effects coming down as you walk through this area. So let's build our way up there and see if that works. Can I place you here? I can, look at that. So let's get some going through the center just so it's always falling down and you can hopefully see it. So it's pretty subtle, but you can see some of the particle effects now coming down. And if you did happen to look up, it's also nice to see some flowers on the ceiling. So I'm very proud of that decision. Now that I've started placing some of this stuff, I can't stop. Honestly, it's like a sickness. Flowering azalea, spore blossom, and glow berries. I just need them to be all over my base. Could have a couple out front here. 
here. Ooh, I'm liking that. Go, very nice. I added a bunch up on the roof, so once those grow, that's gonna look very nice. We should also put some over by the villager house. That was the last glowberry, however. Do have some of these left. We'll place a couple down. I honestly want more of these things, though. I think they're really cool. This might warrant a short expedition. Uh, yeah, I just had an idea, and if for nothing else, going back to that cave, I want to put one above each of my doors. And I only had one left, so that is really cool. It's almost like when a Roman general would celebrate a triumph and return to Rome, be showered by... I don't actually know. What would it be? Flowers, leaves, something when they enter the city. That's like what this is. Every time I enter my home, I get showered by spores, I suppose? Same idea, though. I'm also noticing it causes this effect elsewhere. Do you see these other particles? I don't think that was happening before. Oh, I love that. Yep, so now we need one for this door. We're going to have to head back and do a little bit more uh, requisitioning in that cave, which I'm pretty sure was over this way. Should be right in this area, right around there. Yep, there we go. Oh, wow, there's some goodies that we left here from last time. Don't really want any of that, so we'll go around. I remember you as well. Look at that. You spawned right back in where you were sitting. But anyway, keep an eye out. I think I already see one. Look at that. We're mainly looking for spore blossoms, but I will take glow berries as well. We are having luck right off the bat. I was pretty sure I took everything when I came here last time, but I guess not. Or do they regrow? Because I'm seeing more right there. There's a lot already. Okay, probably a bad plan, but what I'm going to do, I need to get down there anyway. I'm going to try to jump and take out these glow berries on my way down. Hello. I think I got one. Oh, no. That was a terrible mistake. I just jumped right onto creepers. Yeah, I wasn't scared. I knew I'd be okay. Did not frighten me at all. Hello, beautiful. This guy's trying to make a friend down here. Bloop. Yeah, there are just goodies everywhere down here. I was hoping for more spore blossom, but I mean, I'll take this stuff. I also just realized I'm doing the same thing I did last time, which was getting really excited and just jumping down into all of these different caves and not remembering at all how I got here. So we're probably going to have to find a different way out. One thing I'm curious about, if uh, you do happen to know, can you leave me a comment if you know of a way to get more spore blossom without coming out and just finding it in the wild? Is there a way to duplicate those back at the base? Because I wouldn't mind doing that instead of going out and looking for them. I do think I'm hitting a dead end, though. Yeah, just found all the lava pools, but nothing really interesting down here. Oh, hey, friends. I'm not even going to get close. Bloop, bloop. Oh, denied the bloop. Bloop. Not this time. Whoa, okay. Hello, buds. Ranged combat master. Oh, no way. I wasn't even looking for any of you. Good thing I always have a water bucket on me. You are coming home with me. That's what I'm looking for. Whoa. Oh, and this is a... This is actually an entrance as well. This is open to the outside. I should just use this. I should get these coordinates because this is just massive. There is... Oh, oh, I thought that was a creeper. I just saw green. Yeah, this makes a much better entrance than that little dinky one we were using before. I'm going to take down these coordinates. And I did see... I thought... Yeah, there you are. I don't want to just close off this lava pool because I think it looks cool, but I do need to legion proof it somewhat. So let's just go around... Be a little American and build a wall. That should do the trick. Oh man, lush caves are so beautiful. That's an idea for a future video, actually. If there is ever an opportunity, I'd love to have a base inside a lush cave. I think that would just be so awesome. Okay, do not fall. There are a lot of angry mobs down there. And three axolotl. Oh, I gotta see if I have any other buckets on me. I do, I have two extra buckets. Always be prepared. First, though, I saw these and I want to grab them. Then we'll go back for the axolotl. I am having some difficulty with this. Making me get extra blocks to build up there. And number two. Thank you. Now let's go back and convince all those axolotl to join our burgeoning colony. Oh no. Where'd they go? All right. Clear out, zombies. We need to search here. I see one. Hey, buddy. Oh, and there's the other. There were three, but I only have two buckets anyway, so that works out just fine. Look at that. We weren't even looking, and we're going to come home with three axolotl and plenty of other things, too. It's looking a lot more dangerous down that way, but curiosity is getting the better of me. Luckily, curiosity didn't kill the legion, just the cat. This is a strange formation. Ooh, icky. Gross. No, thank you. 
Get out of here, baby zombie. Yuck. Okay, underwater cavern with diamonds. Hello. I mean, I got room in the inventory, so why not? Three, four, you shouldn't have. Five? Wow. Look at that, 12 diamonds. I was kind of hoping this area would link up with an ancient city or a deep dark biome somewhere. And not because I plan to fight anything down there. It would just be easier to get there in the future if we ever wanted to through that big opening up behind me. And I do see you. And yes, I want you. It's just other people want my attention currently. That arrow went right through you and did no damage. Can I climb these? I can. Hello. Ow. Oh, see, I saw you there. I knew it was coming. Not today. There are so many spore blossoms in here, but they're all, of course, up at the top, which is where they should be, but I don't know that I want to get all the way up there and collect them. We have to at least get some of them. Okay, I think we should be just about good. We got 12. That's not bad at all, but maybe we can make it 13. There we go. Why do you have to tantalize me like this? You know that I'm out of buckets. I should have taken that exit when I saw it because I'm pretty sure I'm getting lost again. Lost again? Lost again. Oh, hey, zombie villager. Don't actually need one of you in these world. I can't speak today. These world? This world. Starting to feel a little claustrophobic. I do want to find a way out now. No, I didn't say skeleton. I said way out. Yep, I am thoroughly lost. There's more axolotl. Maybe they're showing me the way home. Let's see. I just went through an underwater cavern to get here and it opened back up. I think I recognize this area mainly because there's an abandoned uh, mine shaft. And isn't that where we flew out last time? Somewhere near that? This place is absolutely massive. All right, I think we just start flying up and potentially dig our way out. Or maybe not. This keeps going up. Yeah, I think this is where we left last time. That looks very familiar. So does that. I remember you tried to blow me up when I left last time. Anyway, let's see if we can thread the needle again. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, that was actually our original entrance, so we did come out the same place. Well, in any event, I am ready for home and my bed. That's always a good sign to see in the sky. Yep, there it is. That looks beautiful from a distance. All right, so we made it back home safely. I got plenty of these spore blossoms and other goodies as well. So let's drop off some stuff in the chest and then get back to beautifying the base. And of course, we need to put the axolotl with their friends. Let's start with that because I don't want to keep them all cooped up in their buckets. I hope it doesn't get too packed in here. Maybe in the next video we expand this because especially if we keep finding more, I could see this getting cramped quite easily. Easily. Next up, the whole reason we went out at all was to get one of you there to make it even. And I mean, we kind of have to put some down this, uh, this center path on the log, right? That only makes sense. There we go. Look at that. And then we were working on things over here as well. Can put a couple in front of their door to make them feel special. And then get back to the glowberries. Llamas and horses love glowberries as well, so we will give them some. I don't know why, but now when I'm walking around my base just seeing all of these spores falling to the ground, it reminds me of um, Ghost of Tsushima, if you've ever played that. Really cool game, but I think it was all the cherry blossoms that were falling down in a lot of the scenes of that game. That's the vibe I'm getting right now, and I absolutely love it. This place looks so much better. It all hasn't grown yet, but I basically just went around and placed stuff everywhere. I put glowberries all over the place. I put the flowering azalea all over the place. I've got those spore blossoms pretty much anywhere that it makes sense. So as it continues to grow, you should notice a bit of a difference, but I, I love the change that that makes. So much more detail, so much more beautiful. All right, citizens, we just have about 10 days left in this video. And why are you out in the ocean, I hear you ask? Because this is where we're going to be spending our last 10 days, of course. And it's not just to play with the dolphins and get this boost, which is awesome, by the way. I do have an idea, something I'd like to do out here using the last 10 days of this video. And the inspiration for this idea did come from one of you, so thank you, Cosman, for the idea. You'll probably know what we're talking about, but everybody else will have to wait and see as I build this. So we'll be building something out there, but of course the first step is we need an actual platform, and I'm gonna have to decide if I want it in the ocean floating a bit above the ocean that's actually the one I'm favoring a little bit right now so that's 
probably going to be the idea. But in any event, we are going to have to go and get some materials before we could do anything at all. Give me a couple of these. Maybe one, two, three, four of these. Maybe like 600 of these. You thought I forgot about the stone farm. Stone farm? Stone generator? Anyway, I'm officially using it, and this is quite disconcerting. But yeah, I need some building materials. While I'm doing this, I can tell you a quick story, actually. It is currently the end of May 2023, and I've been putting off getting Tears of the Kingdom for weeks now. And that's because I am terrified that it will take up literally all of my time, and I'll never have time to record any of this and create content for you. I did just ask for that game as a gift coming up, and if I get it, who knows, I might be forced to actually play that a lot. Why am I using my sword for this? Can't be trusted to change the camera. Anyway, I asked for it, and if I get it, I am committed to still create these videos at the same rate. I don't want to slow down with this. Just my way of letting you know how important you are. I do want to keep the videos coming. I don't want to slow down, even though I would very much like to play that game for about 12 hours nonstop. But I know, Tears of the Kingdom is temporary, and the glory of Rome is forever. Okay, I think we might be good. How did I get cobblestone? Did I actually break one with my sword? And now we just have to convert it into attractive stone. All right, I think we should be set. Now we can start building. Oh man, but look at that. That is so beautiful. As if the game wasn't already beautiful enough, this shader pack just really does it for me. That's by far the most common question I get, by the way, is what shader pack are you using? I try to answer all those comments as they come through, but in case you're wondering and you didn't ask, I use complementary shaders. I've actually switched between these two, so if you're looking, I've used complementary reimagined and complementary shaders, and these are the versions. So just just in case you see these, that's definitely the question that I'm asked the most. So these are the shaders that I'm currently using. And now that I'm here, I'm realizing I'm going to need to do some math. I don't want to build this and figure out it's not the size that I need. So give me one minute. I'm going to do some, some napkin math here and figure this out. Oh man, I attempted to do some math. It is much more complex than you would think to try to do this on a circle. I'm sure someone's going to say, oh, that was easy to figure out. Well, not for me in the two seconds that I gave it. So anyway, we need to build supports down here to hold up something right up top. And you know what? It's probably a better idea to build the platform first, support second, because I'm going to get that wrong. So we're most likely going to switch to cinematic for this because I need to make a circle. And I honestly can't really concentrate when I'm trying to do that and talk at the same time. So I will see you all in a bit. Look at that, did the circle without screwing it up. Well, kinda, I did want to build it one block above the sea level, but now that I see it like this, it looks pretty nice, so I think we'll stick with that. Of course, now we have to fill it in. I realize as the sun is going down, we're basically just making one big spawn platform, but that's all right, that's never stopped us before. It's officially nighttime now, will you warn me if something spawns behind me? Because I cannot see. You were supposed to warn me. I just tried to hit him with a carrot. That should work better. Almost done. And there we go. Nope. There we go. You have no power here, spiders. Okay, the first part of the platform is done. I do want it to look a bit grander though, so let's see what we can do about that. First off, we'll add supports. So I think that will help and it will give us something to build onto as well. And I know this doesn't need supports. It can be a magical floating platform in the ocean, but I think it's gonna add to the design. Okay, now we have those on each of the corners and I don't know what I wanna do from here. Okay, I have a thought. I have a design that might work. We're going to potentially hearken back to the, uh, the compass courtyard. I kind of want something simple like this. Not necessarily an entrance, not necessarily not an entrance. Just something that might look good from a distance or from up high. Let's test that theory. Uh, a bit too round, maybe. 
let's check that. Sharpened it up a bit. Yeah, that's better. I am going to run out of quartz slabs for sure. No worries, I got more. And this should do it. There we go, back to the compass feel on all sides. And of course, we're going to need light. I wouldn't mind having some sea lanterns for this, but maybe sometime in the future we do that. Okay, let's see how that looks. Ooh, there you go. It's almost like a cool insignia or something. Is that the right word? Emblem? Insignia? I'm not sure. I have one more thing I think that I'd like to add to that. So let's go grab some more materials. Kind of like how text looks a little bit weird if it doesn't have an outline. I'm getting the same feeling here. The gray going into the water, just a little bit odd. So we're going to put black stone all around the edge and that should fix the problem. There we go. Let's take another look now. Yeah, you see what I mean? I don't know if it's a contrast or just the dividing line, but now it's more recognizable. It doesn't quite blend into the ocean in the same way. You can see where the outline is. And I much prefer that. Okay, I think the platform is looking good. I say we move on to creating what we need to fill in the platform. And yes, I will start to explain what this is all about and what I plan to do here. I know, Machiavelli and Garfield, you're wondering what the platform is all about. Well, let me tell you along with all of these fine folk. The comment that I'm referring to said I should try building an actual legion. That could be, you know, armor stands with uh, armor on it, maybe some horses, some dogs, whatever else, some decorations. And that gave me an idea. Why don't we have a large platform, large enough, in fact, to hold 100 armor stands, and we'll use it as a way to track our channel growth. For every 1,000 subscribers that the channel gets, I will add a single armor stand. I'll put different kinds of armor on it, add different banners, all that kind of thing. And the goal will be to get to 100 armor stands. This will be our first Centuria, which was the smallest part of a legion. A Centuria had 100 legionaries, a cohort was made up of 6 Centuria, and a legion was composed of 10 cohorts. All together, about 6,000 soldiers. So this will be the smallest of those, the Centuria. It'll get to about 100, or at least that's our first goal. And when this has 100 legionaries on it, that'll mean we've reached 100,000 subscribers. It's a lofty goal, I know, but I'm confident and I think we can get there. The first step is actually going to be crafting all of that stuff and getting it together. So that's how I'm going to spend today is putting together some of the armor and the armor stands, the decorations, just so we're ready. And at the time I'm recording this, we're past 4,000 subscribers, but at least four. Very good start to the Legion. And this is a great start, by the way. I have no idea how to make armor stands. Oh, that's super easy, no problem. And that was smooth stone, by the way, not just stone. And in case you're curious, the way to make smooth stone is to put stone into a furnace. And let's just split it up half and half, make it go a little bit faster. Once it comes out of the furnace, you have yourself some smooth stone. And yeah, I don't need this much, but I figure why not just make a stack of it? I'm sure we'll use it at some point. I think this will be more than enough. And to start off, let's make 10 of these. We won't use all 10 right now, but as I said, I'm feeling optimistic and I think we'll be there in no time. So I need to put a few of these away in the chest because we don't need them all. But what do I do? Do I put down four or do I put down five? Hold on, let me check where we're at. Okay, I'm looking right now and currently at the time of recording this, I am at 4,253 subscribers. Very healthy for the channel and I am super happy with that. So I think for the time being, especially since the, uh, the 500 days is coming right after this one, we'll put down four legionaries on the platform and hopefully by the time we get to 500 days, we can put down our fifth. Now the fun starts. We have to be able to place these, make it even and make sure that all all 100 are eventually going to fit on this thing. Yep, I'm definitely going to mess that up, so don't you worry. Luckily, there is a center to this. That should make it easier. And which way do we want them facing? Do we want them facing this way, which is technically toward the base, or this way, which is also technically toward the base? I think it'll look better if they're facing in that direction. So let's do that. Let's start with one right at the, the, the tip of this platform. And it only makes sense that I give the first one the move plate, the netherite armor. Fully enchanted, by the way. Yeah, right. I'm not doing that. So we'll call this the Centurion. That's going to be the 
the commander of all the legionaries that we place down in here. And I believe this right here is the center. So that's where we're going to place the next one. And that's going to be the first of the legionaries that we can essentially branch out from. Speaking of branching out, why don't we just put one on each side? And there we go. A couple to start out. Our centurion up at the top. And good, it all looks even. So that means as we continue to add more, it should be easy enough to just make it balanced between the two sides, the front and the back, all that sort of thing. But of course, these aren't legionaries yet. We need some armor. And you know, unfortunately, I don't know if we're gonna have enough iron to do this. We'll just have to make do with what we have, but you know, it is what it is. There actually might be more in the chest already. I don't necessarily want to use all armor and just make it all uniform. We can mix it up a little bit. Yeah, so I mean, I'm never going to use this stuff. Why don't we just use some of the stuff in here? And we will need four of each armor piece. So that is one pair of boots, four helmets, or no, three helmets to add to the one that we already have. Two more leggings. Definitely don't need this much iron, so let's put some of this away. There we go, and two chest pieces. Okay, I think that should do the trick. Yep, and now we should be good to go and actually dress all of our legionaries. Nom 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 nom. Hello. Don't worry, you don't have to be naked anymore. I brought some clothes for you. Now, what do we want to do with the Centurion? The golden chest plate seems like an obvious choice. We should start with that. Let's go with an iron helmet, some leather pants, and we'll say the golden boots as well. What do you think? Does that look like a Centurion to you? I think it works. Maybe when you collect more than three legionaries, then we'll get you some diamond gear. But for now, I think this is good. And now for you three. First in line, we'll take a couple things out of here. You know what? I think for this legionary, we're going to give her some golden pants. Enchanted too, you're very lucky. And then I think she's going to get some iron armor. And let's say an iron, uh, iron helmet as well. Yep, looks good. For this old boy, I think we're going to go full iron. Probably had all this in his basement for a while. He's just been waiting for the opportunity to join the legion. And, you know, he's all set. And finally... Finally, at the end, we have, uh, let's call him Bartolomeo. And unfortunately, Bartolomeo could only afford iron pants. The rest is leather. But overall, they're looking really good. We officially have the beginnings of a legion within our Minecraft world. They're here to defend our honor and grow every time that we make a new video. One thing I'm noticing, though, it is still... The platform needs something or, I don't know, something needs to happen. We got to make a little bit more for this. And don't worry, it's not you. I'm happy with all of you. I just realized I'm probably insane. I'm talking to armor stands. But we're going to ignore that for now. I have a thought of something we can do. What if we try to do a regular pattern around these guys? Okay, I need to get this up there. I can't reach. Something like this. And it doesn't look like much now, but when there's more, we can follow through with that pattern. Although, I don't know if I want a lantern. That might look better with a torch. Uh, actually, let's leave it for now because I do have another idea. What else do legionaries need? They need some banners. Now, how do you make banners? Okay, that's easy enough. But we can't do the regular colors. We need to make it a little bit interesting. Can I only dye white wool or can I dye the other ones as well? Yeah, it looks like I can only do the white wool. Oh, well. Okay, so I should be able to do that. Yellow banner. Make a couple red. And why not? Let's use these as well. Okay. Let's see what we can do with those. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. These two on the side, since the middle one has the light, these two are going to be the standard bearers. And just like the beacon, they're going to have red and yellow. Oh, look at that. They even sway in the breeze a little bit. I didn't know they did that. Or maybe it's the shader pack. And then we'll put a couple on the sides as well. There we go. And I have one left over, so it's basically going back here for that reason. There we go. So let's take a quick look. I don't think I've seen it at nighttime yet. Oh yeah, look at that. Imagine this, but with a hundred legionaries all out on the platform. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to it. Well, this is it, Garfield. 
Machiavelli, Lunchbox, Jack Black, Dingus, Jessica, Joseph, Caesar, and Brutus. I'm watching you. It's finally day 400 and our adventure is coming to an end. Don't be sad, we'll be back for more soon. I'm really happy that we were able to get all these legionaries out here watching our back, protecting us from the barbarian hordes. And it's something we can watch grow together. As the channel grows, we can continue to add to this platform and see the legion grow within the game and without. So yeah looking forward to it also as a reminder the next video that i do 500 days is going to be the last one in this world for a little bit after 500 days i want to try a new series maybe something with mods or modded minecraft something a little bit different definitely a different world but i will come back to this world we definitely need to get it to 1000 days eventually but if you do have any thoughts something you think i should do for the the following series or what kind of mods i should check out let me know Leave me a comment and be happy to, to check those out. I do want to say once again, though, thank you for all the comments. They've been incredibly helpful as I've kind of figured out this world and tried out new things, tried new builds, all that sort of thing. All of your comments have been incredibly helpful and have really gotten us where we are today. Everything that you see here and all that we've been able to do so far, including the past few 100 days as well as this one, wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for all of you. So once again, thank you very much. I truly appreciate it. And once again, tradition dictates that we all watch the sunset together over our beautiful base on this, the 400th day of our hardcore world. Thanks for watching.